in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. Lord to speak to you tonight. Ask the Lord to speak to you tonight in a very personal way. Lord, speak to us by the power of your spirit. Speak to us by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome every one of us. I know that the Lord will do us good tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One more time, just pray from the depth of your heart and ask the Lord for wisdom and a visitation tonight. Ask Him for wisdom. Like you heard during the welcome note, it's not enough to just have access to light. The grace must be supplied to be doers. Please pray. tonight of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 I always want us to realize that when we come before God like this, we are coming to access wisdom. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me kings reign. Hallelujah. You only arise and shine to the extent to which your light comes. He says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Every time the word of God is about to come to you, it's a time to rejoice and open up your spirit. 
Because truly speaking, one word from God will change your ideology and open you to a new dimension of His grace. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. Once again, you're welcome. All those worshiping with us for the first time, you're most welcome. All those outside, you're most welcome. I want you to pay attention to tonight's teaching very carefully. Every spirit that wants to distract you this night, you must consciously cast it. Because what I'm about to share for many of you, it will open you to a new dimension of wisdom and a new dimension of grace. Say amen. amen. I've told us that time does not change anything. Time only reveals. It is light that brings the transformation and the changes that we need in our lives. So if you are waiting for time to change anything in your life, it will never change anything. Time will only reveal the truth about a thing or otherwise. But time in itself does not have the ability to change anything. Time is only relevant when there are other factors also in place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your wisdom. There are a number of issues that I'll be talking about today. Hallelujah. I'd like us to look very deeply into the subject of relationships and marriage tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No distracting people. Everybody came for business tonight. So you sit down and listen. I'll be discussing a few issues um, that I think will really challenge us. I, I went through a recent statistics about Christian homes and Christian marriages and it really, really broke my heart to see how that the number of failed marriages we have in the church, we're not talking of outside the church, the number of failed marriages in the church is becoming alarming. Um, that I'm talking about marriage does not mean that I would, I would not talk about many other issues. As I'm teaching about marriage, some of you will hear revelations that will bring you into deeper dimensions of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. There are so many things I want to talk about. There are corrections, major generational corrections that God is going to be bringing. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about a few issues that I think many men of God have shied away from or have not really sustain the intelligence in the spirit to address very genuinely and truthfully hallelujah and so we'll be looking very closely um, you would expect that the church of the lord jesus christ being a church that is called after his name we should excel in every area of our lives most especially marriage especially because the issue of relationships and marriage was God's idea. It was not man's prayer request to God and then his answer. So you would wonder why two Christians can be born again, praying in tongues, and then will not be able to have a very successful marriage. And the, the rate is alarming, brothers and sisters. The, the rate is alarming. And then another closely related to that is another very interesting discovery and it has been proven again that it is more difficult to get married in our generation in fact 10 times more difficult to get married in today's world and in today's church than it was um, a, a few years ago and we're going to be examining that why should that be so because as at the time of our parents and grandparents, they didn't have access to marriage seminars. They didn't have access to books. They didn't have access to resources. Is that true? But right now we have almost every man of God I know who has written books has touched on the subject of marriage. Every church convention, women programs, there are all kinds of women ministries that have come up trying to address the issue of marriage. 
there are all kinds of articles in fact there are ministries that are founded dedicated towards the family life at least we understand right now that the family is one of the mountains that god has set for influence yet the more these informations come the more the graph of excellence in marriage and relationships generally deteriorate and um I've identified some reasons by the Spirit of God and we're going to share on a number of things. The first area we're going to consider is we want to find out why it keeps getting difficult to get married in the church today. What exactly is the puzzle? What is wrong? Is it that God has changed his mind about marriage and relationships? Please pay attention. Married, single, this is from the Spirit and this will bless us why many christians remain unmarried not willfully and why many more christians will remain unmarried in the days to come hallelujah number one the first reason why many christians or many in the body of christ loving people people who sincerely love god and fear the lord may remain unmarried for a very long time the first reason here is misconceptions and confusion about the concept of the will of god or the perfect match write it down the first reason is misconceptions and confusion about the concept of you can put in quote the will of god or the perfect match write it down we hail you most high we truly hail you most high there is a widespread uh, listen carefully there is a widespread confusion in the body of Christ. Pentecostal circles, orthodox circles, Presbyterian circles. There is a widespread confusion. And that confusion keeps multiplying as to the concept of what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the will of God in marriage. Or as we call it in a secular society, the perfect match. This has been one of the major reasons why many believers do not get married and why many may not get married. It's a different thing if you are planning, you have your goals and so on and so forth. But there are so many people who truly desire to be married. 40 years, 50 years, 55 years, 60 years in the church. They tell you they are still trusting God for a life partner or trusting God to settle down. And the number one reason is that there has been a misconception of course perpetuated by men of God and marriage counselors and Christian counselors and Christian books and relationship ministries about the concept of the will of God and the perfect match. Is that true? There are so many people today who may never get married because they listen to a message in a marriage seminar or your pastor or another man of god or somewhere a convention a conference you went to and you heard a woman of god or a man of god you respect and admire communicate a thought about the will of god about the perfect match and the danger of making a wrong decision in marriage the grave consequence of having someone who is not designed for you and that has put fear in the body of christ is that true unbelievers don't have any problem because they can hop into any relationship and hop out they can get married and then for for unbelievers marriage is a contract not a covenant so there is no fear i can step in and get married to this lady after two years if it does not work i throw her out and go my way so because of that um that freedom that godlessness affords them they have no fear is that true one person can be in a relationship with 20 ladies for instance and then the person does not care frankly 
because he's at liberty at any time to let any of them go but there seems to be this sacredness in the body of christ which is very good but if not balanced it will mislead a lot of people so the fear of missing out on the will of god the confusion as to how to really ascertain is there one person for a guy or a lady that has been destined when you were born that one person was born and if you never find that person you are in confusion there's been all kinds of teaching like that is that true and many ladies are sincerely waiting and then um the icing of the cake has been the concept of prophetic revelation prophetic revelation has further complicated this point right when you identify a lady and you tell her for instance i'm seeing your husband in a vision your husband's name is john he's a yellow guy tall um is a graduate of unn and and so on and so forth and all through that lady's life 10 years 20 years she convinces herself that she's enduring because of a prophetic word that was given it doesn't matter how many christian borrowers come around because she's motivated by the sincere desire now it's not like she's trying to be difficult are you is god speaking to you already this this teaching tonight will bring a very radical deliverance to many people hallelujah so she's waiting for the perfect match every guy that comes she's looking at him based on the prophetic template and she trusts the man of god who gave her that revelation he may not be a fake man of god and then for 20 years she's waiting and you ask her what exactly are you waiting for and she said all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes now watch this watch this there are many people who waited like that and their change truly came someone came exactly like that and it was worth the wait and there are others who have waited like that and five years turned to 10 10 turned to 15 15 turned to 25 years when their colleagues the children of their colleagues are graduating and getting married they are still waiting for that promise and they died in anger and bitterness what exactly is the concept of the will of god in terms of marriage what does the bible teach not what does a marriage counselor teach not what let me tell you something marriage is a mystery no matter how long you are married you cannot have enough audacity to talk about it so accurately you know i i truly believe listen listen i believe um in the fact that experience can teach a lot of things when a man has been married for 30 years 35 years i believe he has something to say but the mysterious nature of marriage is such that there is no amount of time you stay in marriage that will afford you every information and knowledge you know as far as you are living in a mortal body hallelujah is that true paul the apostle for instance was never married yet he articulated a lot of things and he guided the new testament church about marriage jesus himself was never married yet he spoke about the issue of marriage and divorce so i i want to clarify something up front there are many people who believe that because they are married they convince themselves that they have gained enough experience to tell everybody anything and they create a doctrine out of their experience and they tell everybody shut up what do you know about marriage marriage is a mystery it's not revealed by your longevity there it's revealed by the agency of the holy spirit is god helping us tonight because many erroneous books listen have come as a result of people who claim they have experience 30 years in marriage 40 years in marriage and they market their template on what they think their experience has been as at the time they were getting married there were social cultural differences at that time a woman was believed to only be dependent women did not go to school then women did not do a lot of things then 
a woman never dreamt of owning a house is that true a woman never dreamt of getting a job so that that ideology of marriage as per that time made a man absolutely responsible for everything and so the woman stayed at home as a responsibility whether the man treated her well or not she knew that living was never an option because the ideology given to her was that if you leave the home you have no reason to live again so that man who may have been punishing his wife for 30 years only because they are not divorced convinces himself that he has been doing the right thing because they are together are you getting the point now and he takes what is supposed to be his experience and he starts to mentor younger generations and say after all my wife is here with me we have been 30 years in marriage that woman has gone through 30 years of hell it's just that her, her ideology has kept her there and because they are not divorced the man convinces himself that he understands the formula for marriage wrong in our contemporary society today it is possible to come into a lady's life who already has a car she already has a house is that true probably has a very good job and so when you come um that dependency mindset maybe for instance in time past you know women had to wait exclusively for a man if he did not give her 10 naira she would not eat now a woman is a ceo of a bank and she's married to the man so obviously things have changed are you getting the point now and many of us are already on our way to a lot of confusion in time past for instance when a guy wanted to ask a lady out there's no western diplomacy you walk straight to her and say i want you to be my wife pray about it that was the end of it you try that today and see how it will hurt you in a way you will never recover from see that now a man listen listen he he got his wife that way and now he teaches you he says look stand up and take steps walk up to the lady and speak the bible says open your mouth and i'll feel it and you now get up taking 1975 or 1954 to 2015 and you go and meet the lady and said i want to marry you i hear you are from my place pray about it get back to me tomorrow because there was a, there was an arrogance that men at that time had a man was a distinguished personality educated or not it was a privilege for a man to walk up to a lady in fact there were certain arranging marriages that were done at that time that the first time the lady sees the man that's when she's leaving the house it, they didn't have any dating nonsense they did no restaurant they just called her and said abigail where are you this is your husband and she rejoiced she rejoiced because for her it was a privilege but marriage in the 21st century has changed you take that template i promise you you can pray all the tongues you want to pray you will be in for a disaster Are we ready to fly now? This is an appetizer. Hallelujah. Oh, I have many things to talk about today. My goodness. So the misconception on the concept of the will of God. What exactly does the Bible teach about the will of God? What exactly does the Bible teach? I've heard of different concepts. Concept number one is one man to one woman right what people will want to call the predeterminate counsel of god meaning that before you arrived your wife had been there she had been um she's somewhere around the earth your assignment is not to look for a woman your assignment is through whatever channel and means you can afford find that one woman and if you do not find her, you miss out on the will of god and there have been testimonies both for or against that concept the interesting thing about marriage is any point you raise whether godly or ungodly there are testimonies to prove its validity are you seeing the confusion now any point you raise about marriage there are testimonies to prove its validity that's what makes it very very technical because whatever perspective you look at it there are people who will agree with it and there are people who will disagree with it the concept of one man and one woman for instance there are people who have given us stories 
that they were minding their business and they saw a vision that's where the concept of vision came from is that not true they saw a vision the name of the lady her address and everything and it happened exactly as they saw we have watched on tv and gone for many conferences when a man of god can help a woman decipher certain things and tell her with accuracy the life partner for her so that revelation now brings us to a point where there is even more confusion in the body of christ if a man of god can tell me exactly the name of my husband why beat around the bush why not just pay the price and look for a man of god whose discernment has been proven to work well and just sow into his life and let this man please end the confusion in my life hallelujah let me tell you the danger of this it has brought more confusion especially to singles ladies have you seen 10 guys come to you and every one of them told you i had a dream i saw a vision and they are not lying they are not telling a lie are you getting me i counsel people all the time and you can find multiple guys or multiple ladies all having a vision or a dream about the same person and you may think they are just corny no 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 some of them were minding their business some of them have had repeated dreams and visions for others as much as 50 or 100 about the same person how do are you am i blessing you tonight and now this innocent brother minding his business has seen all kinds of visions every time he sleeps this is the sister he's seen and then the sister is engaged engaged to somebody who is born again and this guy is confused he does not know what to call the name of his situation right now should i pray for that relationship to be broken should i disagree with my visions and yet nobody is speaking about it on stage there are many believers just jumping but carrying loads of confusion and guessing what they think their way around this relationship thing is this is one of the reasons why there is no marriage in the church hallelujah to an extent that many people today do not even trust their dreams and visions or any experience again because you had a dream about brother a he married in your very presence now the dream changed brother b he's getting married next week and you just say no 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 something is wrong i know i'm not demonized but i know something is wrong how many brothers are patiently waiting for some sisters now do you know that some people have even trusted god to an extent that even when the guy is married unconsciously they begin to wish the lady death because they believe that that my what is my own is my own you go to prophetic ministries and I, I don't say this in a critical way and see the names of brothers and sisters that fly around the altar of men of God engaging all kinds of mysteries of restoration mysteries of reclaiming mysteries of, of forcing what is your own to come to you the Bible says thy word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path let me tell you something if nobody talks about this there will be more confusion in the body of Christ you will find ladies in their 30s and their 40s not getting married pretty lady virtuous lady but the fear every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she remembers a prophecy she had every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she just things am i so desperate that i'm giving up the better now to take the good let me be a little patient maybe my change will come this has hurt the sisters more you know why because the brothers are the ones who do the asking the sisters do the positioning and it's frustrating to position yourself under factors that are very ambiguous as a guy what's come to us you just say lord stop me if i'm wrong i'm on my way going there are two ways God can lead you. Start or stop. 
he can initiate it or you move and say Lord if it's against your will stop me but for a lady her job is to position herself and brothers and sisters it's frustrating when you position yourself and you keep positioning yourself days turn to weeks to months to years to decades misconception on the confusion about the will of God and the perfect match number two second reason why many Christians remain unmarried ready unreasonable standards and expectations unreasonable standards and expectations either from the guy or from the lady or from both of them the reason why many people in the body of Christ will remain unmarried for a long time is what I call unreasonable standards and expectations write it down please look up now we are not against compromising the scriptural standards that God has put the Bible is very clear about certain standards that believers should not compromise however when the standards become unreasonable when the expectations become unreasonable what are some of those expectations unreasonable expectations on financial status unreasonable expectation on levels of establishment unreasonable expectation about physical appearances physique and etc one of the reasons why our parents married fast was that their standards were fair enough for anybody to just get married but right now believers in our beat to say look i'm excellent i'm the head and not the tail even the neck i won't take i'm the head and not the tail you see so those those motivational teachings which are very important and very good have brought us to a point where in a bit to have a discontent for average we have exaggerated it and lifted bars up there are ladies for instance who have vowed that they must marry a millionaire they have sworn between them and their destiny no matter what the man is doing if he's not a millionaire i will not marry him he must be born again and he must be a millionaire there are guys who have vowed that he must be a fair lady or a dark lady or a slim lady right he must be a lady that speaks queen's english it must be a lady that studied in faculty of arts i won't take science i won't take medicine people are that meticulous right now there are unreasonable standards the lady i must marry must be a lady with an exceptional dress sense must be a lady who is a chef must be a lady who is a prophetess must be a lady who is this and that and by the time you array all those standards the only person who fits those standards is jesus christ hallelujah is god speaking to us how many ladies have harassed brothers because of financial status what are you doing this is how god is helping me i'm starting look look let me tell you up front if if god does not help you faster i will be on my way it should better help you you need god to be your ebenezer fast because i can't wait there is a standard i i am a i am a high maintenance lady i don't use with one less than three thousand or five thousand my clothes are designers are you willing and the brother stands there stupefied and confused not knowing what to do with himself now it's okay to laugh but i hope you are getting the message so financial status one of the biggest barriers how many brothers have gotten into things that are ungodly because they are trying to match up a standard it even gets worse when there are other friends involved in the relationship who want to tap their share of the national cake they say i helped you i was part of the process for this relationship i my own share must come out so if you are taking her to mr biggs you are taking four people tells you these are my covenant friends we are church people 
what you do to one you do to all and you see the pressure financial status And then the issue of establishment. Do you have a car? No. Do you? Have, what kind of house do you have? Rented or your personal house? Say, well, I'm, I'm renting somewhere. How many? One bedroom, just self-contained. No, 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 no. Self-contained. What happens when my mother comes? What happens when my sisters come? What happens when, look, I'm a notable person in church. Everybody knows me. What is all this? Where are the extra rooms? You want to embarrass me? You want to drive us out to the parlor? And there are all kinds of confusion. And the guy is now wondering, well, I rented this house 70,000. But right now, as it is, to be able to get a three bedroom flat to be almost maybe 700,000 or 500,000. And the lady said, Me, I'm not ready for anything. Unreasonable standards. Make sure as I speak, you'll be looking at yourself in this message. Then, physical appearance. Brothers. Brothers physical appearance there's no lady that is enough she must be this she must be that her eyelashes must lap the the, the coverture must be meticulous oh come on i'm a young man how old do you think i am 100 years she must be this figure eight figure whatever and all of that she's a lady that when she's smiling i want to see bright teeth i, I don't see what wants what, what looks like my own i already have bad dentition if i you see let me tell you listen listen there's nothing wrong in desiring all these wonderful things except that the bible does not leave us in confusion as to the fact that these things no matter how great will fade with time are you hearing what i'm saying so there are many brothers who will never get married to a lady because they think they have unreasonable standards and i have watched this with my own eyes i've watched it put pressure on ladies i've seen ladies under pressure because now that they are aware that many christian brothers seem to have stepped the bar to the sky they are so physically conscious even in church Open your mouth and pray. And you are, you are talking about something, a destiny altering prayer. And you watch the way the lady is praying. Because somehow in her mind she's aware that somebody is looking at her. Once your face is rough, even if it's temporary, you are in a hurry to adjust it. That prayer, your powder and all of that. You see, that overconsciousness of the physical appearance has destroyed a lot of people. There are people who cannot go to certain churches because they think they do not fit to the physical mode i don't have the clothes i don't think i have this and that second reason why we don't marry unreasonable standards and expectations let's hurry up number three difficulty in early establishment write it down and i'll, I'll explain difficulty in early establishment this is an african predicament sadly the continent of africa has produced a lot of delay in marriage because in africa as a continent and nigeria there is difficulty the average young man cannot guarantee that within the first 25 years of his life he will be established when there are strikes in an institution somebody goes for a course of four years and ends up spending five years six years seven years is that true and then you are supposed to probably go for service and then it is prolonged and delayed all of these institutional factors have contributed to making it difficult for young people to get established and then the high unemployment rate out of a set of graduates maybe one million less than a hundred thousand of them are guaranteed to get very decent jobs within the first three years and because the brother is not a thief it becomes very difficult very difficult to be established the poor salary structure in nigeria has accounted for the late establishment of many people is God speaking to us tonight? An average graduate in Nigeria can be so humiliated to an extent there are masters people.
collecting salaries of less than 20,000, 15,000. There are masters holders doing security works at the gate because they are desperate. They have to make ends meet. Hallelujah. And so someone pays the price, goes to school, learns, graduates, do all the rigors of, 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 of the 6334 system only for you to face a poor salary structure. Look at me. With 20,000, let's, let's use an average job, let's say a teacher. With 20,000, in how many years will you ever know what establishment is? Assuming you got a job immediately, 20,000 times 12 is what? Help me please. 240. Multiply that times 10 years if nothing changes. 2.4 million. What is the average budget for establishment? Do a little mathematics on your head. If you get a self-contained as a young man or a single bedroom or a two bedroom flat and God helps you, you are dreaming of getting a little car, no matter how little, equipping the house with everything you find out that that money will barely feed you and in africa the average young man has some siblings depending on him right if it's a polygamous family you still have step brothers and step sisters may god help you that you are not the first son added responsibility and then the lady you want to get married to if she comes from a family that are really trusting God for a savior and you come in before any talk of marriage starts your response you kick right away into your responsibility so add all these factors together difficulty in settling down we have even for those who want to start businesses we have very strict business policies in Nigeria for instance in in london right and england and every other part like that but parts of britain you can register a company in 10 minutes how many minutes 10 minutes you can actually go online and register a company in 10 minutes in nigeria you try to register a company you will first spend between 60 to 150 thousand right for an average small size company and it will take you at least two to three months Think about the difficulty so it is difficult for the average young man who wants to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity to be established so in nigeria you find a young man 30 years 35 even 40 years still in his father's house not necessarily because he's not responsible and he went to school but the times are hard is god helping us tonight the fourth reason why many in the body of Christ remain unmarried and may happen like that for a long time. Are you ready for point number what now? Four, parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. There are godly parental influences where parents guide their children guide their children to make right decisions guide their children to be established but it's unfortunate that in africa and especially in nigeria there are very very poor and ungodly parental influences that have stopped people from getting married influences ranging from cultural barriers to high and unreasonable marriage requirements and then the influences of parents and family even after marriage see that there are many parents who have stopped their children for instance from settling down because they have created certain standards how many of you seated here looking at me your parents have warned you directly or indirectly don't ever bring a poor man in this house there are some of you they carried the map of nigeria and showed you very clearly and said every state i marked x on don't bring any guy from there is that true and so the lady is there and all she's doing is looking for someone from her place and 25 rolls around 50 or 30 years 
35 and she's still searching for a godly brother don't forget she's not just searching for anybody there are parents who are so desperate about marrying from their place they don't care whether he's born again or not you would rather marry a failure from your place so that those cultural barriers in fact there are families where even from your place you don't marry there is a clan they have drawn a line for you on is that true the reason why it was very easy for many parents is because during their time listen carefully during their time um we did not have the issue of migration and movement from one place to the other an average man can be born and bred and grow up and die within a locality like zaria and never even visit a place like abuja is that true and so because of that they live what we call a communal life all the ladies will go to the stream together to fetch water or go to bath together and so it was easy the guys knew where to go and look for the ladies they knew that when it was evening they had traditional dances they had all kinds of platforms that brought them together but the world in the 21st century has changed many of you have never been to your village you don't even know where it is you only have had the name or seen it on tv some of us have never gone to our village and now they are mounting pressure on you come home we'll prepare a lady for you and you're saying what are you saying they said that's that's how that's how my your your father and i got married unfortunately this is very strong especially among the mothers is god helping us and so there are many christians confused how many believers are in godly relationships godly relationships by god's standards but do not have the courage to even talk to their parents because the moment they say mommy or daddy there's something i want to tell you they say what is it they say i want to talk about marriage you say let me even before i even hear the nonsense you have to tell me does the guy have a car yes or no no long story not he's going to buy does he have a car yes or no parents have stopped children from marrying because of car parents have stopped children from marrying how many parents have stopped children from marrying because they say if you must marry this guy he must be willing to come and live in abuja or live in lagos or come and stay close to us have you seen people like that maybe he's a lecturer in yola or a lecturer in gombe state or in zaria or in kano they say i don't want to hear anything if you will come to lagos or you will come to port Harcourt and settle there then i can allow him i consider that to be the height of self-centeredness and at extreme levels wickedness many parents i'm sorry to say this but i say this without apology that there are so many parents who have not followed the path of success in their life and they have failed and are now using their children as a restoration tool many parents have yoked their ladies and said look you know we have suffered you better go and bring a man that will wipe our tears mommy there are two guys who are standing you say hey, the first guy loves god and you find the mother not interested in what the daughter is saying he loves god he's very serious in fact the way he's going it looks like they ordain him and the mother is looking or that that ordain him just irritates her because now they, they it means that he's going into ministry there's one other one he's not serious he's not nice but god is helping him he's walking here and there there's a, a place where he's working he's getting good salary he says so who are you choosing now he said oh, honestly me i'm a christian he said leave that you know the world has changed you better go to that brother and then how many children cost their parents in their homes cost their parents how many mothers and fathers carry guilt all around because whenever the man beats up the woman because of not knowing the lord they come back home and the parents say just go back it's, it's like that ungodly parental influences others have influenced their children because of their ego they have a cabal of people and all their friends their children married wealthy people is that true and so when you come this is especially for many of us the ladies they just feel uncle so 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 his son married a senator's son and to this his son came from uk i have i have watched with shock the way arranger has been done on the internet parents go all out of their way to make arrangement 
they say there is a guy in france as he's coming into nigeria he's coming to marry all these dowry thing people shout about that guy just knows dowry was paid he's not even aware of the basket he has never seen the box that was given but simply because he's in france he came into nigeria carried the wife in two weeks took her and they never saw their daughter again only to get to france and they found out that the guy was a drug baron but he lied to them that he was a ceo How about unreasonable marriage requirements? You pay dowry in cash, 100,000 in kind, 1 million. Are you seeing that kind of thing? Unreasonable requirements. Uncles and aunties and well-wishers that never gave you 10 naira when you were in school. Now that you are done, they come in as stakeholders and they dominate everything. Say we can't allow our daughter to marry cheap. You are going to bring a cow. And that cow is not just any kind of cow. The cow must be this and that. After that you are going to bring two, two trucks of yam. After that you are going to bring ABC. And the guy is shaking there. The guy is wondering. How much is the budget for an average marriage right now? In Nigeria I'm talking of a decent marriage you won't imagine how much is to rent where 40 or 50 people from your village are coming how much is to rent that place and feed them and many come after the marriage they will never go back they'll say want to wait one week and see what is going on and all through that one week you are paying these are very real issues so a young man saves money to start up life after marriage he starts his home with debt and then in anger he now starts beating the wife are you seeing that now because he, if the wife shouts at him he say i bought you i didn't pay dowry for you i literally purchased you so don't even open your mouth and shout if i bring a concubine in this house just go out quietly don't even tell me anything Many issues were pretending in church that are not serious issues. And it's increasing. Increasing. There are many parents that put pressure on their children. Look, this is our marriage. Um, an ambassador is coming from UK. A governor is coming from Adamawa State. Our uncle who is in Jerusalem is coming in. So make sure that you organize the marriage to the taste of the dignitaries that are coming and the young man is saying look i'm starting out small you say mr man I, we are telling you now it's not an advice you either choose the lady or leave everything but the lord of sabaoth is watching let me tell you because many of the parents who are talking like that they could not buy one tuba of yam when they married our mothers is that true one tuba of yam yet the woman believed in them she got up 13 years 15 years 18 years 20 years and naively followed that man and for 10 years of their marriage she was in hell she watched him go to school and become blessed and today now he can stand and forget what god did for him how many parents forget one of our mothers in lagos i remember one time she was talking to us we went for a program and then they are very wealthy people very comfortable and very wealthy and she was talking and uh, she was saying when it was time to get married there was one other man who was who seemed to be more blessed than her husband and they were influencing her and she said no this is the man she will marry and she said when she married her husband he had nothing although he argued and said he had a bicycle but she said he had nothing today they are blessed and their marriage is heaven on earth many of us ladies would have married since 2005 or 6 or 7 till now we are waiting because there are certain ungodly parental influences let's hurry up number number what number five the fifth reason why many christians remain unmarried is what i call increased 
break down in moral and spiritual standards increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards standards that have been lowered look at me there are uh, because our generation has so downgraded the sacredness of marriage right and morality things ranging from premarital affairs right now is is okay to just sleep around so all of the things that are supposed to be the blessings and the benefits that should only be enjoyed within the context of marriage are now being experienced by people after marriage so there is no desire there is no longing there's nothing to look forward to in marriage again how many people do you know a man and a woman not married dowry has not been paid but they live together why should they marry are you getting what i'm saying now why should a lady marry when marriage would tie her to one man and then she's permitted to have seven or eight men who can supply her finances and now you want to tie her down to one man she doesn't want that kind of thing because she wants liberty and she wants money provided all the time why will you want a man to tie himself to one wife when he can fly around to any hotel and whoever is available there he can have 10 girlfriends 20 girlfriends so the degradation in the standard of morality and spirituality is the reason why many people will not get married for many people marriage is an inconvenience because they want their unguided life of lust i want to be able to sleep around anytime i want i want to be able to be free i don't want to sit down and then i think that i have a wife and children at home many men want that kind of thing i don't want no responsibility i don't want to look at a lady and my wife is tapping me and say who are you looking at no are you seeing that now so that degradation in moral and spiritual standards guys and ladies stay together for instance unfortunately sometimes the house belongs to the lady and then the man comes as a squatter because she likes him and he stays there eats her food drives her car watches her television sleeps on her bed enjoys her cushion and the man does not want to get married why should i get married and try to be responsible for a family when i have gotten a wolf there is a lady here who is working with federal government she can work and bring everything my own is just to be enjoying the money degradation in moral and spiritual standards that's created irresponsibility that's created all kinds of things and then there have been unbalanced teachings in the body of christ that have encouraged this kind of living in a bit to bring the church into the revelation of who we are in christ and what christ has done for us and the reality of the fact that we are the righteousness of of god in christ right now and the concept of sin and the concept of holiness and righteousness to in an attempt to um, balance it properly there are individuals that have swung to the other side of the pendulum and so people are now authorized that that conviction of the holy spirit towards ungodliness is no longer there is that true so i can i can do anything i want to do so long as i run back to god and say lord you know that i won't do it again so we keep playing all these games with ourselves is god helping us I have identified this as the top five reasons why many in the body of Christ may not get married. Confusion as to the concept of the will of God. People have spiritualized that concept of the will of God to their detriment. And then unreasonable standards then difficulty in early establishment then ungodly parental influences and increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards now i want to teach you something there 
there has been confusion in the subject of marriage especially trying to learn what the bible says and what the pathway the biblical pathway to marriage should be questions like at what age should a guy get married or a lady get married right questions like what are the do's and don'ts how do i know i am prepared for marriage is it when you graduate from an institution or is it when you see bed on your face or ladies is it when all the friends around your circle of influence start getting married you now feel it's a sign what exactly are some of the provisions that the bible puts for us to prepare us to know that we are prepared for marriage write it down school of ministry permit me to use a bit of your lecture and teach tonight i taught the school of ministry yesterday and i'll take a little extract on what i taught them to be able to guide us there are three dimensions everyone right there are three dimensions that a man must find himself operating in to know he is ready for marriage and there are three dimensions that a woman must find herself operating in if you are not operating in these dimensions you are simply not ready for marriage doesn't matter how old or young you are write this down and i'll explain it very quickly the three dimensions in a man are number one as a husband number two as a father open bracket provider and protector please write it down the first dimension that a man must train himself in to be prepared for marriage is as a husband second as a father and then number three as the spiritual head or the priest of a home write down for the lady the first dimension a wife second dimension a mother put in bracket a homemaker and then the third dimension a minister please look up while i attempt to explain this point let me have three guys please three gentlemen come sam any two guys can come just stand here it's in the character of god thank you sir it's in the character of god look up to operate in a multifaceted dimension for instance we see god operating as rafa we see god operating as sikenu we see god operating as sabaoth right we also see him in redemption operating as both the lion and the lamb so it's not unusual for god to be multifaceted in his operation and he created man in that image and so for any man to really know that he's prepared and ready for marriage graduation is not enough reason for you to think you are prepared for marriage advancement in age is not enough reason for you to think you are prepared in marriage now all the brothers look up and sisters also look up there are three dimensions in every man let's call the first dimension the husband call the second dimension the father and call this the third dimension the spiritual head is that all right the dimension of a man as a husband defines the scope of his ministry to his wife it's important for every man to understand that scripturally you have a ministry that is exclusive to your wife and if you have not trained yourself to be able to carry out that ministry to your wife effectively you will never be able to get married and you will never enjoy your marriage The dimension of a man as a husband defines everything uh, uh, his intimacy with his wife defines meeting her emotional needs define meeting her psychological needs all of that together defines the role of that man as a husband watch this the danger with this is that many in our society are not husbands they may be fathers they may be men of God and I preach this with a bias to those in ministry many pastors are poor husbands many leaders are poor husbands because we are busy trying to fend for the family we are busy trying to do ministry and do this and that and we forget that there is an exclusive role ordained by God that a man should play to his wife how many of our mothers are starved of the love of the attention the togetherness the emotional satisfaction that should come on account of complete marriage 
there are many pastors many businessmen many church leaders many entrepreneurs many public figures and celebrities who are starving their wives of this dimension every brother here i want you to know that if you are preparing for marriage you are also preparing to be a husband all the brothers say husband yes you must you are not a husband when a wife comes to you you are a husband when you are prepared to meet that need don't wait for marriage to make you a husband you are first a husband before marriage at the point where you are aware of the demands this dimension trains you to understand who a woman is. Women are fragile. Women are emotional people. The Bible says to dwell with them according to knowledge. One of the greatest ministry of a man at this point is to be able to give his wife what I call emotional security. Watch this. When a man begins to compare the lady he's going out with or his wife with another lady your la the lady you are going out with is standing there and you turn and look at another lady and say my goodness what in the world is this what am i looking at what you are simply telling your lady is you are short of a standard and you begin to mount pressure on that lady every lady wants to come to the man god has given her and feel secure it is not a news again that both male and female we all have assets and liabilities there is nobody including myself who is free of assets and liabilities there are weaknesses there are strengths there's nothing embarrassing about it are you getting the point now so a husband is one who has understood this dimension and will protect his wife emotionally will protect the lady they are going out with emotionally because he understands that her love for me is a response to the confidence that i give her how many ladies get angry the moment they begin to see another lady coming around their man they are angry they are resentful they begin to feel insecure because they feel this sister is obviously finer than me this sister is obviously this and that than me and because she knows that the man has not created a track record of celebrating her the way she is she begins to feel insecure that's what has brought jealousy that's what has brought presumption between ladies same thing for guys so brothers if you want to be you want to go into marriage you must realize that you have a responsibility to your wife to protect her emotionally protect her emotionally women are very vulnerable the prettiest of all ladies will still need reconfirmations forget all that shout ladies shout no i don't need anything it's a lie they were designed to work on confirmations reaffirmations how many people are in relationships and never for once he does not make seeing the lady look like a big deal he looks like look you are easily replaceable at that point listen brothers if you ever carry any man's daughter and give her an impression she's easily replaceable you are not being sincere to her if you don't love her or you think she's not fine enough leave her alone god will bring somebody who loves her and will passionately follow her i hate seeing ladies chasing after guys helplessly i said hey, hey if i shout he will leave me oh brother don't leave me don't leave me if you leave, where will i go to and the guy is happy he's taking advantage of their vulnerability brothers it must change in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us tonight how many of our fathers how many of us have seen our parents father and mother just take out time from their busy schedule to sit together and talk when was the last time you ever saw your father and your mother thinking of not restaurant in the home there just sitting down to eat and talk if they are together they are quarreling he's rebuking her he's lost the dimension of a husband many people think the dimension of a husband is only the pre-children dimension so it's the dimension that a man shows a woman until the arrival of children from the time the woman gets pregnant the man feels I've, I've graduated from being a husband from now henceforth my work is to be father is that not true and a spiritual head and so they rob the wife of that emotional dimension 
Number two, you are preparing for marriage. It means you are preparing to be a father. Look up. Let me tell you something. You are not a father when you have children. The word father is the Greek word Abba. Right? The Bible says he's given his spirit whereby we cry Abba. Father, father, father. The word Abba means source and sustainer. Not the one who reproduces children necessarily. You are a father when you are the originator of a thing and you are the sustainer. Speaking in the context of marriage, you only become a father when you are a provider and protector. Write it down. Fatherhood has nothing to do necessarily with giving birth to children. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. The moment they have a bouncing baby boy or a bouncing baby girl or some children, they convince themselves that they are fathers. No, sir. In the Bible, the Bible's view of fatherhood, listen, the Bible's view of fatherhood is not just reproduction alone. It's the ability to provide and protect. Here's what the Bible says about being a father. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, paraphrasing, that any man that cannot provide, protect, cater for his family, it says that he has lost the faith. He has given up the faith and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Brothers, this is a very serious point and I want you to pay attention whether you are married or you are preparing for marriage ask yourself am i a father you don't become a father when you get married you get married because you are a father many men are not fathers the hallmark of fatherhood is responsibility the ability to provide and protect it says but if any provide not for his own So are you a father brothers ask yourself i want to marry the question god is asking you is are you a father it's not enough to be a husband you must be a father you will have to provide the conducive atmosphere provide love provide food provide shelter provide security provide the enabling environment for your wife and your children to find expression provide spiritual guidance provide mentorship you have to protect your family right protect them against the physical hazards protect them against the the emotional intrusions of society that's what it means to be abba abba so in our generation when a man is married and does not have children we say he's a husband but not yet a father the moment the wife gives birth we say finally i'm now a father wrong societally correct but scripturally wrong fatherhood is about provision and protection no gentleman should get into marriage when you are not a father you are not a father by your age you are not a father just by longevity of time you are not a father by the appearance of many children whether spiritual or physical you are a father according to your ability to provide every lady asks the gentleman close to you are you a father don't answer i am matured i'm not a small boy nobody's arguing we know you are 35 are you a father that's what we want to know tonight are you a father I was born 90s. Uh, we are not arguing. Are you a father? You neglect fatherhood when you become irresponsible. All the brothers say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a father indeed. Say it loud in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family say it again i receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family and it starts with your relationship 
show me how you provide for her and show me how you protect her i'm not just talking of finances necessarily show me your attitude towards responsibility i can discern your nonchalance about life nonchalance about people how many gentlemen do not have this fatherhood consciousness let me tell you when a guy begins to have a fatherhood consciousness he will travel and go on a trip every time he's returning he's thinking there are people in my house or there are roommates that i have what can i buy for them even if it's as little as cheese balls that's fatherhood a sense of responsibility self-centeredness is dying you know that it's not about me alone you are satisfied when people drink from your grace drink from your finances you are becoming a father how many of us travel for for five months five weeks you come back and the only thing is the same box you went with guys how you doing now don't miss you now kai now wow and you gist everybody and you see all of them hungry say never chop and you are just watching you are not a father you are a friend when you call god father you are not just calling god father because you are his son or his daughter you are calling god father because as your father he has made it a point of duty to provide for you and to protect you he provided salvation he secures that salvation today he has provided a platform for you to be a partaker of his divine nature he has provided a platform for you to enjoy the life the zoe life here on earth that's what makes him a father many men deceive themselves thinking because they have the ability to produce babies or they have produced babies they are fathers fatherhood is not just about reproduction fatherhood is about responsibility so brothers god is asking you tonight are you a father you can train yourself into fatherhood you can know that you are a father you are not a father when you marry you get married because you believe you are a father now when you understand this, you will never go and carry any man's daughter to get married to her when you know that there is no means for you to eat. You are not a father. At that point, the lady does not have to start asking you, where are we going to eat food? How is money going to come? Because if you are truly a father, you would have made that factor. You would have factored in as part of your marriage and relationship responsibilities that I am Abba, provider, protector. Is God speaking to us tonight? The third dimension for any gentleman preparing for marriage, the third dimension is as the priest. Every man is instituted by God to be the spiritual head of his home. Ladies, that's why it is important and paramount that you must not compromise on the issue of marrying somebody who loves God. Our parents made that mistake. Many young people who are not exposed to this truth have made the mistake. But now you have an opportunity. It matters. Because according to God, he's the spiritual head. God birthed Adam. And so must be responsible. He's his spiritual head. Eve came out of adam everybody looks onto its source according to god's organogram for family the woman and her children should look up to the man for spiritual support the man should be the initiator of bible studies he should be the one to teach the children on tithing he should enforce discipline he should enforce love unfortunately that's not what we have in many societies is the woman who is trying to get the family to be spiritual because there are forces of darkness and they are real are you hearing what i'm saying children should be able to come to the parlor and see their father lie down and just worshiping and playing worship and just rolling on the floor and giving god praise i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday did you know that the moment you begin to carry out your priestly responsibility sooner or later your son or daughter will start copying have you seen children do that that you see a father kneel down very soon you see the child too will come and kneel down how many men do you know have taken on their priestly responsibility that while everybody is sleeping at home you now hear the voice of the priest room to whom laying hands on the wife and children 
these are my children this is my family i bring them under the grace under the prophetic covering satan you have no hand over my wife over my children that's what it means to be a spiritual head not that they wake you by seven and say honey bible study is five say the day you wake me again i swear to god i will slap you don't play with me please we are not mates you are here eating you don't know how i'm bringing the food spiritual head the spiritual head every man must take position and it starts from the relationship it starts from the relationship you must take position now it's okay let's be very sincere there are times when you can enter a relationship with a lady who is more spiritual than you are you willing to catch up are you willing to grow that seed of willingness is what we are looking for you may not be like that as, the, as at the time you are in the relationship or even marriage. But do you sustain the seed? Speed wiggles word. When he got married, his wife was more spiritual than him. He was a coupler, but he was able to catch up and he became the apostle of faith. How many people have allowed demons to drive their homes into pieces? Your wife is pregnant. That's the time to lay hands on her womb and prophesy. When she gives birth in the hospital, you should be the first to hold the baby. Don't allow anybody just come from anywhere and, and soil the destiny of your child. And then you just come too late and you are shouting, hey, why is the baby big? You should be there, you hold the baby and prophesy. Like Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet, you hold your child and speak into his destiny. Whenever evil is going on in the family, your life and your ministry is turning upside down. You take your regalia of a husband and put it aside. You take your regalia of a father and put it aside. And wear your prophetic and apostolic robe and tell the devil, I'm not just a husband. I'm not an irresponsible man. And you tell all your children, just leave me. I know these forces. Go and sleep. And they hear your voice. Shake it, take, 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 man, ta, ta, pa, ka, ta. That's manhood, brothers and sisters that's been a man you take the spiritual atmosphere you move out with buckets of water oil and anointing oil around the length and breadth of your house and you are prophesying commanding the forces of darkness to bow your child brings a result and you find out that the result is not motivating you lay hands on him and say you are my son everyone looks like his source i lay my hands on you not to get cain and start frogging him and playing ball with your child because he's embarrassing you let me tell you, the world that we live in is no longer the world of physical strength. It's the world of spiritual capacity. He may be a bubble, but let him be a man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because a day will come, jeans will not save you. Polo shirt will not drive demons. It is on the strength of the understanding of mysteries. Have you seen families where sickness just breaks out? Mother is sick brother is sick father is sick and you see the man running confused he has not learned the mysteries that's the time for him to get communion and say my wife prepare communion man takatata reketekete and he lays hands on it and say by this tree the bible says the spirit the water and the blood and you minister communion to your family brothers i challenge you make your home like this it is within your power to make it so it may not be so for ladies because they submit to a man you are not submitting to anybody in the home that means your home is a reflection of whether you pay attention to what i'm hearing tonight i've made up my mind that my home will be exactly what i will tell you i must take on my priestly position many men have allowed the devil to ride through their families and wreck and destroy their homes the bible says occupy you occupy through dominion 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 your wife gives birth to two or three children and you are expecting more and it looks like the devil has closed up her womb and all of that and you are just you are just smiling and saying don't worry it will happen what are you saying get angry one night and while she's sleeping you just come and sit by the side of her bed and when she wakes up say no no you just continue sleeping i know what i'm doing i come in the spirit of eli and you are speaking and prophesying let me tell you there is no woman i know 
who will not want that kind of man by her side a man ladies am i speaking to you guys you think ladies just want money let me tell you the truth many ladies especially those who are loving god know sincerely that it takes more than money you can have all the money in the whole world and anything can go wrong but a man of stature not a physically macho man necessarily a man with capacity in the spirit that any spirit that is flying around the vicinity of your family when it gets here say hold on i know this guy we know we know the weight he carries in the spirit when the devil wants to touch your wife and he realizes that she's bearing your son name he knows that that woman has been implicated brothers when you become a husband a father and a minister you are ready for marriage are you hearing what i'm saying so right now while you are sitting some of you are husbands congratulations are you a father some of you are only priests mr man let me tell you you are not only going to be casting out spirits and devils you don't cast out devils every day right now the atmosphere is okay be a husband be a are you getting what i'm saying now let's go to the ladies quickly Please sit down three ladies quickly oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. three ladies worship team hallelujah are you enjoying tonight's teaching the first dimension sister open your eyes your ears and everything and here the first dimension is as a wife don't assume you know what i'm saying let me explain this is a mother this again is a minister now watch this what does it mean to be a wife what does it mean to be a wife many ladies do not know what it means to be a wife they think they know a wife just like the husband defines the entire scope of your ministry to your husband not your husband and your father not your husband and his family under the dimension of a wife your ministry is only to your husband let me use this opportunity and challenge many ladies who can keep their men at second place you love your father your mother your brother your uncle so much everything you do to your husband you do to everyone else you are not a wife you are not a wife that dimension of being a wife is a dimension that creates an office for the man to feel like the man in your life that is the dimension where you bring the king out of that man that is the dimension where you let the man know that you are not like all other men you are exclusive and i demonstrate it in every way possible by meeting your emotional need by looking physically attractive for you oh yes hello by now i know you are aware that physical attraction means a lot to men if you are not aware you are hearing it now are you getting me don't think because you get married i'm not talking of nudity don't get me wrong are you getting the point i'm not talking of nudity and seduction no no but i've seen so many men depressed over their wife they just get married five years ten years and the woman is looking as if she's hundred years old she does not care she has thrown away her wifehood because she thinks she's giving birth to plenty children and the man is frustrated he looks at another lady who is ten times older than her and she's looking like an angel and his own wife is looking like whatever it is there please don't play games with men let me tell you any man i don't care whether anointing oil is on top of his head jesus is written on top of his head there is a dimension a lady was wired by god to make a man feel like a man if you don't do it it's because of negligence not because you have not been equipped and that has nothing to do with seduction from your physical outlook let the man be proud of you not a lady that you just got married and the man says come and escort me somewhere you just dress as if you are going for a night vigil and he's looking smart looking like a young man you are there embarrassing him and he said honey you can just sit at the car honestly i'll be brief i'll just come and say no no i must come i want to see what you are hiding if nobody has told you 
I'm telling you now in the name of the Lord, it matters. It matters. Ladies, it matters. And it starts from relationship. Are you a wife? When was the last time you made the guy God sent to you feel like a king? Let me tell you, in every brother there is a king. It takes a wife to bring that king out. Are you getting me? When you find yourself shouting at a guy and taking advantage of his niceness, there are some brothers that are very cool-headed. Even if you slap them, they won't do anything. And you deceive yourself to think that because they are cool-headed, they are foolish. There is a lion in every brother. There is a lamb in every brother. Keep the lion in the cage. Don't let it come out. You won't like it. You must make every guy feel like a king. Vashti, stop being a wife. As a result, she left the palace. Vashti, she stopped being a wife. When the king wanted to feel like a king, she was not available and he sent her out. And here came Esther, Hadassah. Hadassah always made the king feel like a king. She prepared a feast for him. And he said, what's the occasion for the feast? She said, nothing. Just heralding your royalty. And the king said, my goodness, please do it again. And then by himself, he said, what do you want? To half of my kingdom, a man will give you anything if you bring the king in him. Don't make requests until he becomes a king. How many ladies have strangled the king dimension in their men? You just come and say, um, do you know that that other brother bought me a laptop? Kai Yusef. How many months? Six months you have been trying to buy a laptop. One brother just came out just from church. Oh, no strings attached. You are killing the king. When there is no king in your kingdom, enemies will come. Keep the king alive. Ladies, keep the king alive. There are some things ladies have been doing that a guy is tolerating it does not mean that's how he was designed to live. You shout at a guy anyhow and speak to him anyhow. He's supposed to see you by seven. He comes by eight. You don't give him room to explain himself. Let me tell you this. Nah, 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 nah. And you are acting Nigerian film there. There is a king in every guy. Don't take the generosity of any man for granted. I'm sorry to say this. Many married women have taken their husbands for granted. They do not exalt that king dimension. When you got married to him, you used to bring food in a tray. And be very respectful. Now you just carry a bottle of juice as if you are selling it. Just drop it on the table and say, um, there's rice in the kitchen. And he will get up. You see, that's the thing with many men. They will get up quietly and go and serve themselves. But you are endangering your marriage. You are endangering your relationship. Many ladies are embarrassed to be wives because it takes submission to be a wife. If you are still driven by ego and I don't want to look cheap, you will never be a wife. To be a wife, you must soil your hand and create a king out of that man. But if you can be stupid enough to make that man a king, he will be a fool for you. That's his reward. Ladies, say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be a wife indeed. Sisters, hear me. Don't learn those jargons that you watch on TV. There is a difference between secular relationships and marriages and kingdom relationships. Please don't let anybody confuse you. A virtuous woman who can find. The Bible says her husband will praise her at the gates. She will do him good all the days of her life. Can you honestly say from the day you started going out with that guy, you have brought joy? Ask yourself, have you brought joy? Don't lie. From the time you started going out with the guy, have you brought joy to his life? Or heartbreak, his finances went down, his reputation went down, his spiritual life went down, his ego went down, his sense of purpose went down. You are not a wife. He that finds a wife, you must be a wife to be found. It's not marriage that makes you a wife. When a man comes to you, it's a sign that you have become a wife. He that finds a wife, not a woman. There are many women, there are few wives. He that finds a wife. Number two, mother. Watch this, mother. In one word, a mother is the maker of the home. The key word under motherhood is sacrifice. 
there are many ladies who have paid the price to be wives they can give any guy the kind of love he wants they can cook for the guy they can do everything but they are not mothers ladies i challenge you to have an elderly woman in your life who will not feel embarrassed to teach you motherhood ladies i challenge you in the name of the lord do not allow westernization suck out the dimension of motherhood in you motherhood a man can build a house but it takes a woman to make a home a man cannot make a home a man can build a house and put chairs in it a home talks of the emotional climate creating the conducive atmosphere for love the conducive atmosphere for unity the conducive atmosphere for progress and peace is the responsibility of a woman i challenge the school of ministry and i said when i come to anybody's house there are three things ladies i will look at in your house to prove to me whether you are a mother indeed number one your kitchen your kitchen is a reflection of your motherhood ability kitchen that's where the meals are made right that's where the health of the people is preserved there are many people their kitchen is a mess there are many young ladies you dress well you wear new clothes but your kitchen is a mess five day old plates one week old plates roaming around in the kitchen there the sink is dirty you look at the cookers palm oil everything on it you see bread that has fungi to carry it and throw it you lift it you leave it there the trash can is filled with dirt you are not a mother you may be a good wife but not a good mother the bible says she wakes up in the morning talking about her motherhood dimension while it is yet early and prepares something for the children proverbs 31 and she comes to cover them to make sure they are warm in winter that's a mother a homemaker sisters are you mothers are you mothers indeed that's the question god is helping us to understand tonight many ladies are not mothers but you can be mothers if you make that decision tonight so your kitchen number two your toilet the toilet in many homes is a disaster a disaster plus plus disaster one universal towel used by everybody including visitors one universal sponge right a sponge that looks like a rag turn into pieces and the woman cannot buy another one listen let me tell you ladies there are some responsibilities that are not for men don't let anyone fool you if you see a man doing it he's doing it out of love he won't do it forever you can't expect a man to go to the market and go and buy new buckets and bring it back home and say i notice buckets are empty please don't insult the man there is a king in every man i'm not saying men cannot do it but what is your own room a child is running out of the house mucus everywhere torn trouser you see you see children running out of homes no clothes and he runs and hugs somebody outside and the man is feeling embarrassed and the wife is just looking won't you come in to come in and see the other things toilets you look at the toilet and people it is not flushed it's not clean there is no water people bath and they leave the remaining water there the second person comes to add his water on it and now bath all kinds of things happen come on let's tell ourselves the truth many homes have dirty toilets ladies make sure you are not praying for an award-winning man to keep him in that kind of atmosphere shout no way i hope so i really hope so How many ladies are not proactive they get up and go to the market only to shop clothes and hair and you cannot buy soap the man is rushing because he has to catch up with an appointment ah soap is finished and the wife said sorry honey and he now checks ah the towel this there's no water Meru has not come all kinds of domestic things you want the man to do everything no that's the dimension of your mother a man returns back from work tired and hungry and that's when the woman lazily drags herself trying to break pieces of eggs and, and open up indomie to make dinner and yet when they ask you who do you want to marry they say you know what i want to marry no are you preparing 
God is not a wicked man to carry his son that has been sweating in the vineyard and come and keep you and then you strangle him to death. There are many men that are heartbroken as a result of the way their wives trivialize them. Please ladies listen. God is speaking to us. Don't you ever, if, you, if a man has not talked to you about it, I promise you, it's just because he's tolerating you. It's not because he's enjoying it. There are men who can just take up with anything. But don't, don't, don't push men to the wall. It's God helping us. And then number three, your living room. Your parlor. You enter the parlor and everything is scattered. Water pours on the ground. The carpet is dirty. Pieces of paper around. Children roaming around. Everything is unkept. The moment you own the fan, you see dust all over the parlor. And many mothers don't train their children. How many ladies get up in the morning and know that part of their assignment is to make sure that their rooms are clean. It starts with your own room now. Don't wait till you are in a bungalow. You want to stay in a duplex of eight rooms. Are you ready to sweep it? Don't just say, oh God, I'm tired of poverty. Are you ready to sweep it? I want a room with this. I want an extra room with an aquarium. Every honor comes with responsibility. Is God speaking to us tonight? If you listen to what I'm saying, I promise you, 10 years, 20 years from now, you will thank me for what I'm sharing with you. Your living room. The key word under motherhood is sacrifice. Sisters, look at me very carefully. If you are unwilling to let go things right now, you are not a mother. I'm telling you this. You are not a mother. There are ladies who cannot give up their food. They cannot share anything. There are ladies who even if you have one million naira and a guy stands here with one thousand naira, you want him to buy something of nine hundred naira for you and keep hundred naira. What sort of person are you? Once there is no heart of sacrifice, you are not a mother. Because a good mother will inconvenience herself. A good mother will protect the image of the father and the husband. Have you seen many of our mothers do a lot of things and give the honor and the credit to the husband? The man has no idea. Visitors are coming to the house and they come and they see all kinds of meals. Different types. And the friends of the man turn and say, Ah, ah. Promise, promise. Your house is heaven or earth, oh. And you see him laughing. He did not contribute anything to that table. But he's happy. And the woman, because she's a good woman, she's happy. They will ask her, they say, Madam, you are really enjoying, no? That means your husband is taking care of you. And she will say, bless God. Not that she will call the person aside and say, see, this is my initiative. I did it because I fear God. If I have to wait for this idiot, nothing will happen in this house. How many of you right now can do good and give the credit to the man God has given you and not be ashamed? Ladies, how many of you can do that? That you are the one that dressed him well. And when he comes out and people are saying, Car, you have an excellent dress sense, you keep quiet. You know that you look and say, excellent care. Dress sense. I was almost passing the night at a tailor's place to make sure they finish the clothes. Now you are giving the credit to him. A mother does not want any glory for herself. Her pride is that her husband and children are lifted, even at her expense. That's why you see a woman can carry her food when a visitor comes and the husband says is there anything to eat she says, ah yes yes whereas that food she's saying yes to is her meal and she will run to the kitchen turn it in another plate warm it quickly and come and the children are saying mommy boy you have not eaten the worry she's protecting the image of the family you must receive grace to be a mother number three every woman is a priest too every woman listen and this applies most especially to single moms and women who maybe their husbands are bereaved and so on and so forth that there is no man in your life whether technically or directly if there is no man in your life you must still perform that role of priesthood i read a book some years ago the power of a praying wife 
and that book changed my life every woman must be on her knees this is your altar in the home every woman must create an altar especially if you are marrying a man of God don't wait until scandals kill him and eat up his ministry where will you be at the point where Jezebel is killing him and destroying his image there is a way you can know that your husband is getting busy he's getting busy and spiritually he's not intact you can discern that he's going down that's the time to go on your knees and intercede for him you see him making foolish decisions he's a leader over millions of people one decision can implicate him there are psychophants there are newspapers waiting to discredit his grace a true priest is a woman who can pray and fast and standing and say lord i'm praying for my husband i'm praying for my family men no matter how discerning we are most times we don't discern marital evil fast till it destroys us i can hug 30 ladies right now as generous as possible a lady can sit down and know the one that hugged me from the spirit and the one that hugged me from the flesh a guy will not know the guys will say man Kai, you're a very nice person but a lady will look and say Kai, nah, no way this this one i felt something in me when when that lady hugged that brother my spirit told me that this hug is, is too generous for just a normal godly expression of love that means god has given you that spiritual equipping to save the man from danger how many women sit down and have dreams and you see the life and the business and the ministry of your husband crushing god didn't just show you to keep it a man is going on a trip and you started sensing in your spirit maybe accident why don't you discuss and say honey let's pray say oh, let him go and then something happens he returns back on bike and tells you the car is damaged and he said oh i saw it oh i saw it what did you do about it remember the wife of herod let me prove this to you remember the wife of herod she had a dream and she saw the innocence of jesus she got up and told her husband this man is innocent i know you people want to kill him my spirit tells me he's innocent Throw away that thief Barabbas. Let them crucify him. Leave this innocent man. But they didn't listen to her. How many men have ignored the priestly roles of their wives to their detriment? Brothers, let me tell you. I shared with the school of ministry students. There is a prophetic dimension in every woman. It's just that that prophetic dimension is fragile. You must love her and honor her prophetic office. And then you will benefit from it men because we are egotistic people every little thing you turn to a lady and say i beg she's a lady i know that they are emotional there are times that ladies can handle intelligent things emotionally but let me tell you something there are times that in the midst of their emotionalism they can speak forth the counsel of god there are times a, a man sits down and is trying to do business with some friends and you see his wife keeps quiet she's not hearing the conversation but her spirit her spirit and she says honey i don't know what is going on but i am sorry i'm not disrespecting you but this is your oil thing you have been doing from the day you started it something in my spirit i sense god doesn't want you to be there you say god doesn't want me to be there are you aware have you seen the last pta letter have you seen how they have increased the school fees it's now 150,000. please don't annoy me and the woman says i'm sorry until the day they now call and say madam are you missing so, so so please come and identify your husband in the prison we just locked him up there is a priestly dimension to every lady brothers please don't let the beauty of any sister fool you beauty without god is nonsense are you hearing me i repeat beauty without god is nonsense the beauty of a lady can fade like a leaf added to that beauty add spirituality Add spirituality. Add spirituality. One of my greatest joys is that by the grace of God, some of the people who have risen from this ministry and have gotten married, almost every one of them I know of, they are enjoying heaven on earth because of some of these principles. You never go to their homes and see cat and dog. No, you never see that kind of thing. There is love. The homes may not be perfect, but I tell you, there is God in that home. They love themselves. They are living by the principles of the kingdom. 
So ladies, there are three dimensions to you. The first dimension is what? A wife. And the, your ministry as a wife is to your husband alone. Please, don't think in-laws are equal to your husband. Don't think children are equal to your husband. There is a way you concentrate on children and refuse your husband. You are not doing him good. There is a way you concentrate on in-laws. There are ladies who will rather their in-laws be exalted than their husband. Every time you see cow tail pepper soup, in-laws are coming. You have never prepared it for your husband. Gary in the morning, the remaining in the evening. That's how the man lives. You starve that man because he has vowed to be faithful to you. He has lived in a prison because of his commitment to be faithful. If I were a lady, see, there is what you do to a man. Even if a woman is walking naked, he will just say you are joking. You know, you are joking. Temptation goes kilometers away because there is absolutely no reason except demonic oppression why he should look at another woman. What in the world? Ladies, I challenge you. I want you to lock your husband's attention to you. It's as if you are programming him. Keep him to look at you all the days of your life and have no reason whatsoever to look at another woman. The power is within you. It's within you. Every time Jezebel wants to come and destroy a home, they usually use the lapses of the woman. There is usually something a woman is ignoring that somebody does if you are not cooking well for the man and you have not paid attention to learn new meals you only know how to cook six meals yam beans jollof your traditional food and and and, and maybe any other thing chips how can the man eat just that all the days of his life during the meeting in office they try to give him a sumptuous meal he rejects it because he wants to come and honor you he doesn't want to come back satisfied and you start suspecting him and so he rejects a meal that would have given him joy all through that night and comes back home and meets a disaster and the, the pain is he knows that that disaster will be repeated again and again and again and so a woman now starts calling him by 10 30 hello sir sorry oh please don't be offended I know that uh, I don't deserve to be calling you. And the man is saying, uh, who is this trying to bring the king out of me? What is all this? I say, sorry, sir. Don't, don't be offended. Um, I, I just wanted to find out. Have you eaten, sir? Who is this? It's your secretary. Please, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope, I, I hope I'm not interrupting your mood. And the man will say, no, 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 no. Bye-bye. He will off it as if he was courageous. But a seed is being sown. And he's saying, I cast this. What is all that? The next day again, sir, have you arrived home safely? And while he's doing that, the woman is watching Nigerian film and laughing. We get here, let the man punish you. Whereas your family, your family is on fire. There's fire on the mountain. Oh, I know it. Come on. And there is fire on the mountain. You are about to face a bitter experience. The woman is calling. And then the man now calls her back. And says, what is it? Why are you disturbing me? She says, no sir. I thought as a secretary, I should really find out about your, your well-being. I just wanted to, you didn't look very nice in the office. And then he says, eh, you know, GM spoiled my mind. I mean, what is all that? I'm an innocent person. You don't need to tell me, sir. I know. I have always known that you're an exceptional man. I mean, the, the, your file come through my table. The king, another woman is bringing the king out of that man. Madam, fire on the mountain. Your home is at work. Let me tell you, don't think because he's a pastor, he's not a human being. Don't think because he's a reverend with collar on his neck. The moment Satan finds out that you are ignoring your role, somebody will start playing the role. And we live in a generation where there is an average of three to five ladies for every available man. And so there are people who are not desperate. They are not ashamed to be as desperate as anything. He comes up in the morning to the office and there's a hot cup of coffee. 
Say, I, I saw your schedule for today and I saw that, Kai, your day is busy. And I thought you really need to be agile and walking. And the man locks the door and says, what is this woman doing to me? Oh God, you know I'm faithful. I, I am married to one woman. And carries the picture of his wife and puts it on the table. So that the woman will come and see. And when she comes, she says, wow, what a lovely woman. I can imagine the way you are doing well in your house with this woman. Women are wise. They know exactly what to say. She says, I can imagine. I mean, no wonder if you have a pretty woman like this, you should be eating well. She's, she's not an idiot. She knows exactly how to get the man and keeps you in a position where you now have to contemplate. I'm eating well. Am I? Am I? No. Very soon you start coming home with her. You start coming home with her and the nonchalant wife is insensitive and she does not recognize that. Before you know it, one day, the woman will find out that whether she meets her husband emotionally or not, he doesn't care. Whether she cooks for him or not, he has stopped quarreling her. Let me assure you, somebody has sat down on the throne of your office comfortably and is enjoying your husband. You can keep the name while she keeps the experience. She may not want to marry him. Keep the name. Dear Mrs. Whatever. While she keeps the experience. Every time we hear that a man fell or a man is sleeping around, people are so quick to call the man idiot, stupid. You claim you are born again. The question I want to ask is, where was the woman? Where was the woman when that was happening? It is not good. The Bible never said it is not good for a woman to be alone. A woman can be alone, but it is not good. God knows why he said it is not good. In other words, it is dangerous. It's better for the man to be a celibate supernatural grace comes upon him but when he's married madam don't play games with your husband god bless you one more thing and we're done today are you blessed so far i want to share on what i call the biblical pathway to finding a life partner we we'll end there pray in tongues for one minute thank you jesus I believe that this will heal relationships and heal homes. Just give me a few minutes and let me say what I'm about to say very seriously. Thank you, Jesus. The biblical pathway to finding a life partner. Please look up, everyone. Is there a method or a formula, if you want to say, to finding a life partner because it looks like the church is largely confused i shared with you a few things from prophetic confusion to here and there the interesting thing when i was doing a little research for this message i found something that shocked me there were all kinds of ways that people married in the bible let me give you a few all kinds of ways good bad ugly for instance, Hosea finds and marries a prostitute. Hosea chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. You don't need to write it, just listen. Moses finds a man with seven daughters. He waters the flock and carries a wife free of charge. Exodus 2 verse 16 to 21. Boaz buys a land and with that property he finds a poor lady and she becomes his wife. What a coincidence. Ruth chapter 4 from verse 5 to 10. Are you blessed? The Benjaminites in Jude 21 verse 19 to 25. They stole women and ran away with them. That's how the women, that's how they married. So just go to a camp, steal a woman, disappear with her. <clears throat> Jacob, he labored for seven years times two. Genesis 29 verse 15 to 30 seven years of toiling and labor got the wrong wife labored for another seven years got the one he wanted 14 years labor to get a wife 29 verse 15 to 30 of genesis david he kills goliath gets rich marries the king's daughter and frees his house from paying tax that's how he got his wife first samuel 17 verse 25 the king swore that whoever defeats goliath he will give him his wife he will make him rich and the family will no longer pay tax. 
Ahasuerus was rich enough to organize a beauty contest where all the virgins in the land were brought and he got a wife. Esther chapter 2 from verse 3 to 4. David kills Uriah and marries his wife. So in the Bible, people killed people and married their wife. Second Samuel 11. Solomon found out that marrying one or two is not the way. So he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Second Kings 11 verse 1 to 3. These are different skills and strategies. People explore this marriage thing in the Bible. 1,000 women in his life so that he can be faithful. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 35 just said, look, all this thing is a mess. Let me just serve God and leave. And so he refused to get married. Now you see, I just did a little rundown. There were times when there are more like capturing slaves. You capture a slave and turn her into your wife. So if you read the Bible without the wisdom of the spirit, you will be deceived. Which of the method will you choose? Kill a man's wife? Kill a man's husband? A woman's husband? And marry, and marry her? Or go to a vineyard and buy real estate? And everything in it plus the woman is a sign that is your wife. Or organize a beauty contest. And then do it like the bachelor. And then the finest becomes your wife. Or marry 1,000 women. Or defeat, ask federal government what they will give you. If you will fight terrorism. Maybe you marry the president's daughter. Anyway, the point here is this. There are many examples. The Bible, interestingly. Now, I don't know why exactly. But the Bible does not exactly give us a direct formula. Like salvation. You know, when it comes to salvation, there's a formula. Is that true? There is a way you know you are not saved. There is a way you know you are saved. But for marriage, um, it seemed as though there was no exact formula. And I believe the reason is because we are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. But then I've been able to bring up a few things that I want us to look at. We may not have the time to consider two incidences in the Bible. Adam, the first marriage in Genesis 2.21. Let's just look at it if you can help us. Okay. Genesis 2.21. Let's just turn there so that we'll hurry up and pray. Genesis 2.21. I want to bring out a few points that will bless us. Genesis 2.21. Genesis 2.21. If you are there, say amen. And the rib, listen. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, the point here, the key verse is verse 23. And Adam said, This is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man watch this so the wife that adam married was made of the same material the same substance the same ideology the same conviction are we getting some points there now so adam married a woman who was made of the same substance if she was a lion their substance will not be compatible so we see compatibility as a key here it had to be a woman who was taken out of him had the same composition with him spiritual composition psychological composition biological composition you never marry a man or a woman that does not sustain the same composition with you there will be big trouble i wanted to talk on genesis 24 the story of isaac that's the first show in the bible where a man goes to look for a wife for another person but let's just jump that points to note there are no there is no physical formula provided for finding a wife but there are scriptural guidelines there is no physical formula in the bible the bible scatters guidelines and i've been able to bring 
five scriptures that if you use they will guide you to make a very godly decision ready number one proverbs 18 22 proverbs 18 22 if you can help us media let's just hurry up proverbs 22 proverbs 18 verse 22 okay look up please read with me inside and outside one to read who saw what find it a wife find it a good thing and obtains favor so automatically the bible shows us that the process of getting a wife will demand responsibility on the part of the man there will be action it will involve you the word fine it then says whosoever picks a wife or whosoever prays a wife to come whosoever finds a wife it gives an idea of searching it gives an idea of desire that means there will be commitment if you want to get married action will be required on your own part the bible says whosoever finds a wife you're not going to sit down where you are and want a lady to come and meet you it's not going to happen that way regardless of whether you saw a vision or not there will be an initiation there will be a step you must take number two amos chapter 3 verse 3 it buttresses on genesis chapter 2 amos 3 verse 3 very quickly please amos 3 verse 3 this is the grand key i believe to a successful marriage and relationship the key to a successful marriage is not love it has been proven again and again that love is not enough to keep marriage can two work together except they what be agreed the word be agreed is the word compatible 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 measures your degree of agreeableness spiritual agreeableness psychological agreeableness similarity in ideologies about god about money about life about parenting two will work together if they are compatible are you getting what i'm saying now very important that means come that means it doesn't matter whether i saw her in a vision or in a dream whether i saw myself wearing a bow tie and she was wearing a white wedding gown and a flower came from heaven and said this flower is your marriage flower i don't care what you saw or did not see if there is no compatibility imagine for instance that this is my wife i get married to this young lady right and i'm praying in tongues or she is praying in tongues and i'm turning and say what is that i don't believe in praying in tongues two are not working together i believe in spending and wastage i believe in my ego i rather let children die to be giving donations to church and that's not her mindset you see that there is friction so what is your ideology about god bless you what is your ideology about god what is your ideology about money what is your ideology about culture 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 what's your ideology about ministry a man of god for instance goes to get a lady because she's fine have you seen whether what is her passion about ministry otherwise she will be fine for nothing and destroy your church when she's supposed to be a model she cannot sacrifice she can't lay down her life to be the mother figure for the church is god speaking to us i want you to write this down and start it never i don't care what you see in the spirit never brothers ask a lady out who you are not compatible with you are going to destroy her or she will destroy you even if she does not have every ideology straightened out does she have the teachability sisters does he have the teachability it's not just that he's in a jeep what is his ideology about managing challenges otherwise you are a christian you will get married to him he tells you he's a christian and the next thing he brings the tail of an antelope 
or the tail of any animal and hangs it as a jazz and says see i know i'm a christian but let me tell you my great grandfather had this thing it's like that in our culture everybody brings it if you don't understand just keep it there that's supposed to be a christian he wakes up in the morning and he's making incantations on that tail and you are saying my goodness what did i get married to and you know by spiritual intelligence that you are in trouble but you claimed you were marrying a rich man now you've married disaster even if you never see one vision even if you never hear anybody's name by the time you find a lady that is compatible in ideology i guarantee you except the word of god is a lie you will have an exceptional marriage that is the reason why unbelievers although when they married they were not born again because they had compatibility they still are together and christians who are born again because they think born again will solve compatibility the bible says it is better to sit at the roof of your house than to be with a contentious and angry woman you're a man of god you know where god is taking you to now you go and carry a lady that is lazy you carry a lady that is weak crying over everything let me tell you two of you are born again but just know that 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 family is on its way to crash down i tell you the truth don't don't unnecessarily just spiritualize things and say no i know my god is able this girl the way she prays mr man can is she going to be able to cook for you that's the reason why i encourage people the moment you start a relationship part of the many responsibilities of the man is take the lady to your whether your church or your meeting place wherever is your primary place of spiritual feeding do you know what let me tell you if a brother in koinonia ask a lady out in koinonia the probability of them having an exceptional marriage is even above 90 percent why because their ideologies are similar they are hearing the same thing and they believe the same thing are you getting what i'm saying now not that we say okay we are fasting for 10 days and the wife is pulling her mouth all around and angry and saying this 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 thing me i don't like all these kind of things so what kind of 10 day fast eh what is all that and the man is saying look look look, look. we are going far we are going far or a woman who hates excellence and is ready to manage anything but the man is ready to stay verse number three proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 very interesting scripture when i stumbled across this it blessed me in no small way proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 everyone read one two read it says houses and riches meaning your father and mother your parents you can inherit houses and riches but when it has to do with a woman you must involve god are you hearing now it says a prudent wife is from the lord meaning if you ignore god you throw god out of the equation because you believe that this god every time god comes in he messes my relationships and makes me to take a decision many people hate god until they enter a relationship they now go to god and say lord this is hereby introducing my life partner and god will say you chose it go ahead by the time you see pepper in the, in the relationship or the marriage you now turn and say god where were you god says i was here all the while behold i stand at the door and knock if you open i will come in if you give me entrance let me tell you something brothers and sisters a prudent wife and by extension a prudent husband is from the lord you cannot use the seeing of the eye to know that a man will still be faithful after 10 years men can change as at the time you meet the man he doesn't have money you don't know what his tendencies are you cannot use the beauty and the physique of a lady just to believe that this is my wife oh god no matter what you say a prudent wife is from the lord a prudent wife is from the lord so involve god these are the guidelines that the bible gives us 
so number one there is a finding you will take action and for ladies you will position yourself brothers if you ever want a wife stop sitting down and just saying visions and visions and visions i will round up with the issue of visions a prudent wife is from the lord number four isaiah 30 verse 21 is another guideline that the bible gives us isaiah 30 verse 21 very very powerful isaiah 30 isaiah 30 21 media 30 21 please isaiah 30 okay and thy ears shall what hear a voice behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand when ye turn to the left it says you will hear a voice in other words expect the leadership of the holy spirit in helping you choose a life partner expect it the bible gives you a guarantee that you will hear a voice leading you my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice and then lastly Luke chapter 14 verse 28 everybody read this is the cost dimension of marriage and relationships ready want to read seated not down first and counted the cost whether he has what sufficient to what finish not start the building not start the marriage which of you intending to build a marital tower will not first sit down and start counting the cost am i ready to pay the school fees of children am i ready to be responsible over a woman and her family am i ready to live with one woman all the days of my life and be faithful am i ready to grow old with this man and grow old with this woman am i ready to love her like my life am i ready to protect her am i ready to die for my family this is a guideline no matter what vision you see no matter what dream you have god will not count the cost for you this is where we miss it god can show you that shall harm is your wife but if you don't count the cost it will still fail it does not mean god lied a preacher may be preaching for instance and maybe communication barrier or something like that he may make a statement like um god's primary assignment is to kill you something like that and all of a sudden a newspaper says god's primary assignment is to kill you caption heresy preached by a and b and c and because we live in a generation that is gullible to hear bad things we always want to check ah, ah. god's assignment is to kill you nobody goes to listen to the remaining part of the message and discern the intention are we together and it is based on that we have libel men of god it is based on that we have libel people how many people are moving around and saying my mother told me I, you will see if you succeed no to mean that her actions meant she's she's happy so that you will fail is that not true and then it's it gets so bad when you now go to a meeting where they say anybody standing against your family that bed, where even if it's your mother you say yes even if it's my mother you take that anger and say my mother told me or maybe my father said you are a failure they may not really mean it they may be communicating pain at that time if you have the ability to look at in intentions beyond actions you are a wise man intentions as i work with people i always try to discern the intentions the intent of certain things physical actions are not guaranteed 
they are not the best way of truly revealing our intentions a wife can come to her husband for instance maybe out of frustration about his carelessness and she can make a statement out of pain and say look if you don't if you stop giving me money make sure you are not going to be eating in this house and the husband says oh if i don't give you money i will not eat in this house if i give you money i eat in this house you claim you are a deacon in your church is that what they are teaching you no husband look at the intention what your wife is trying to say is i'm hurt by your irresponsibility and i would love you to do something about it are we together listen you are you become an exceptional leader an exceptional believer if you sustain the ability to discern intentions we have we have created seditions in our families we have grouped ourselves into two a family of five people father and the, his favorite mother and the other three people because of our ability to judge intentions you look at a man whose face is like that whether he's happy or not his face is the same you just look at him and say this guy is a wicked person you look wicked i'm sure you are wicked whereas that person is the nicest person you will ever meet in your life have you seen people like that i don't like this guy his face is mean it's not the person's fault the person is like that your your face is this you will never get a wife or you will never do this we we judge actions more than anything A woman comes to Jesus with an alabaster box. Are we together? The Bible lets us know that this woman has had a challenging past. And then she gathered one year's wages. Are we together now? Beautiful woman. She steps into a room. And everybody is sitting there. Religious people. Together with the disciples. And this woman comes to Jesus sincerely. And gets down on her knees. And the first thing many people are thinking is seduction. Jesus, you are in trouble. Jesus, you are in trouble. Your ministry is about to die. Nobody is thinking worship. A woman is coming with a genuine motive. Please, while you are laughing, take seriously. These are the things that the Lord told me. They are not things that I guessed. Destroying the body of Christ. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. When your mind is corrupted, it becomes the vista from which you interpret everything. Hallelujah. And she kneels down before him. And the Bible says she takes her alabaster box. Breaks it at his feet. Right? And the aroma and the, the fragrance just rises as an incense of worship. That represented her worth for one year. And she broke it. And the Bible says she used her hair. Hey! her hair and then began to clean his feet and jesus did not do anything about it i'm sure the disciples will say jesus you better don't play games with us here what is going on madam where do you know this guy that you come and break alabaster box and judas ah why are you doing this you would have gathered everything and let's give it to the poor. The Bible only records what Judas said. He didn't tell us what the remaining said. I can assure you he was not the only person that spoke. But Jesus said, don't, don't stop her. That was the word of God, the bread of life. He was looking at this woman's incense. And he said, everywhere they talk about him, they will also make reference to this. Are we together now? He was able to look at her intentions. A woman who was caught in adultery. They never brought the man. She ran and came to Jesus Christ. Right? I mean they pushed her there and they said. This and that and that. And Jesus looked at them. And he saw that woman. She felt sorry for herself. She felt sad. And she was just hoping there would be a hand to hold her. And say you can start again. And Jesus looked at all the psychophants. And the religious people. And it says, he who has no sin among you, be the first to cast stones. When you learn to judge the intentions of people, I counsel people a lot. Are we together? And I talk to pastors, I talk to leaders. 
there are times a man of God can come and meet me and say man of God I need you to pray for me I love God but I'm dying I'm dying of immorality I can easily look at that person and say you ah are your members aware that you are dying of immorality I look sincerely and the only thing I tell them is rebels don't come to God they run away from him when you come to God is a sign that you are not a rebel and I look at him how many times have we injured the wounded soldiers in the body of Christ because we look beyond we don't look at intentions we look at actions are we together now love a husband looks at the wife and finds out that there is another man who has been suffering and out of compassion she's trying to help him and he says if you are having an affair tell me now let me kill you and kill myself why don't you come down and say okay I, I, I see your motive that you really want to help this person but I'm a bit uncomfortable with it why don't you structure it and do it this way and that do you know this simple thing I've, I'm telling you has broken marriages has scattered churches are we together has produced eternal enemies men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball brothers and sisters all kinds of people because we are experts at judging actions above intentions learn this tonight if you are in this you are short-circuiting the glory of God from your life meaning he can never send to you a lady who comes to you and say man of God I've been involved in abortion 12 times he said young lady are you seeing that door is still open forward march no no God is love the Bible says for he causes the Sun to rise on both the just and unjust part of my desire in life is that my hands will remain open as a place of succor for wounded people that every time they look around and there is nowhere they can run to they can find a heaven that we can clean their tears and wash the garments together and by the grace of God koinonia will remain that place we will never drive our wounded soldiers we will never drive people that are far away there are people who have given their lives to Christ but for some reason because of pressure maybe family and all of that they derailed and they got into all kinds of things every time we meet those people do you go to church now say man of God I've not gone to church you are such a stupid person Jesus helped you you would have died that day blah 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 and you are a disappointment to the kingdom huh this is what you are doing whereas that gentleman or that lady if you would look at their intentions what they are saying is I need help can somebody please help me we want crowd I wrote a song years ago one day I'll sing it for you it's called the bandage is larger than the wound powerful song if I produced an album I would have blessed people and made money from that song. Worship team, I will give you people when you are ready to write your very powerful. The bandage is larger than the wound when his loving arms surround you. He binds that broken heart. And then I, I can't remember the rest, but I mean, what a beautiful song. Imagine somebody singing that kind of song to you. Come on. When was the last time someone ran to you and believed that they are coming to you, you will be able to understand them. One of the greatest gifts people can give to you is that trust that you have the ability to understand them. Do you know how people crave to be understood? Are we together now? God, that's why God took out time to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand him. It pains the Lord when we misunderstand him. When people turn and say, God, if you were alive, why did my father die? If you were alive, why did my mother die? If you were alive, why did I lose the job? So he sends the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Because in teaching the word, he, you will correct the wrong ideologies you've had about him. So he will begin to teach you all the laws of the kingdom. And in it, you will now look and say, wow, 
so my poverty was not caused by you there is something i did not know god you are a faithful god and i'm sorry for blaming you for something you do not have a hand in it god left the holy spirit so that he will be understood listen come to a point in your life where you learn to judge intentions behind motives i think two years ago a man sent me a text his daughter slapped him real daughter biological daughter gave the father a slap and spoke all kinds of nonsense against the man and said this and that and that if he plays with her she will arrange uh, uh, what they call it all these boys that don't have anything they are doing you just give them anything and they come and beat somebody for you now he says that they will make that arrangement and come and beat the father the man was wise because the ego of a man will not tolerate that he will first kill the lady first before he will look for the man of God that will raise her back to life but then this man did something I'm, I'm not just opening up people's secrets i just want to use it as a point the man did something that taught me a lesson on fatherhood when the daughter slapped him and did everything he picked up his phone and called me it was ringing ringing i saw the number ringing and then i picked up and then he said ask this person i said how are you sir it's been a while and he says you will not believe if i tell you this apostle i said what is it sir he said can you imagine my daughter, of course, it doesn't mean he was calm and soft. He was boiling and angry. But he was able to contain himself. My daughter that I gave birth to takes a hand and slaps me because she has begun to follow men that are my age. You know, and all, you know how men talk when they are angry. And a sector is sector. And he did this and that. And then I began to talk and I told him, I said, Daddy, I, I know that this is very bad and this and that. And then he calmed down. And then he said, you know what, Apostle, this is, this is where the story is. He said, it reminds me of what we do to the Lord all the time. I felt ashamed at once. I just, I felt, oh God, how many times did I slap you from morning till now? And then the man said, I just wanted to express it to you. I'm her father. I'll walk on it. Until this lady left, she was still attending Koinonia. Ever sorry for that attitude. And today her and her father, I may not call them best of friends, but she honors him with her life because he did something to her. He told me that later in the evening he called her and he sat her down. And he says, any lady that disrespects her parents will die. The Bible says it. And began to talk to the lady and i was surprised i was very surprised that the lady booked for counseling when she came for counseling she never knew that the father had spoken to me i wanted to see what she was going to come and meet me for and she opened up and told me said i did something that is unthinkable i think i'm cursed i said no no you are not cursed this and that and that and that and in my presence she called the father and apologized to him and I have a lot of wine. I carried one wine. I say, apology is not enough. Carry this wine, pray in tongues on it, and go and apologize. Also apologize to your mother. That's her husband you slap. And all of that. And everything was over. Now, listen. Listen. What is the point of all this story? The father, though angry, had the ability to see the motif, the motivation, and was able to contain himself, and by it, he won the lady. Imagine if he fought her, and and injured her or did something fire for fire never produces a solution it ends up in ashes this is what many pastors have done this is what many people have done some of us sitting right here this is what we have done to our family members we have brought seditions and bitter hatred among one another especially for families that are polygamous i'm sorry to say it, but i have to address it families that are polygamous we are experts at creating intentions i saw stepmother standing near the pot and they say nobody should eat there's trouble no 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 learn to judge intentions say i receive grace to look beyond actions and see the intentions of people your roommate comes in and she's edgy and moody and all of that 
and you don't take out time to find out probably she saw her results and things were bad or they just called her at home and said something had happened and you just look and say smile jerry and say please 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 i'm not in the mood say sorry oh don't ever talk to us too again if you are like that no learn to look at the intentions of people there are people who have passed me for instance sometimes they pass me they don't even greet me i don't turn and say come oh let's let's define something here no 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 men will love you and they will give their life for you if they know that you are one person who has sustained the ability to look beyond the motives hallelujah Years ago, I managed one very serious issue. One guy got a lady pregnant and um, the families were coming for counseling and they came and met here. They didn't plan to come, but the two families came to report the situation and then they met here. It was, it was a catastrophic event that happened. I mean, um, I, I say all of these things just to, just to help you. It was a serious thing. You know, and of course, you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. There will be tearing people and all of that and, and so on and so forth but the first thing i tried to discern i wasn't really concerned about the loved ones i was looking at the individuals forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance let me tell you something you need to understand forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance if if i walk up to tosin today and i insult her and I just say sorry, sorry, with the intention of insulting her again. If okay, it's called rebellion. Forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance. What is repentance? A genuine state of brokenness and a change of heart. So that you do not misunderstand what I'm saying and then allow people to take you for a ride. Forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance. The second thing the Lord showed me that communicates lack or the absence of the love of God in the body of Christ and among believers is that we hate people and we fight people for sustaining perspectives that are different from ours. This is a big one. We hate people and we fight people for sustaining a paradigm that is different from us is a major mistake i've seen in the body the moment your thinking is not like my own joshua selman i hate you the moment my perspective is not like your own i hate you and this is probably a, a very big one especially among denominations because we have tremendous hatred there are people who will see a lady or a guy from another ministry or another denomination and never knowing the person, they already have anger and hatred and resentment. There are people for, for putting on a watch like this, you can already be angry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you just dressing well is enough to create anger. There are people when you see somebody who doesn't dress very well, you are still angry. It's, 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 a, it's an issue of concern, but not enough to be that angry. We fight people who do not sustain similar ideologies. This is what causes trouble between siblings at home. This is what causes trouble between pastors. Are we together now? Listen, if you really want to love people, you must have an ability to respect people's perspective about life it is very important the whole world cannot be koinonia the whole world cannot be joshua selman let me guarantee you if the whole world is like me this world will be a mess i repeat if the whole world is like me this world will be a mess i know you like me because i'm preaching you have not seen how boring other areas of my life are 
trust me if you know how boring other areas of my life are how about coming to meet me wanting to crack a joke and all i'm telling you is scriptures do you like that well forget about the guys ladies do you like that do you want to marry that kind of person <laughs> are we together now you can see the ladies responding it's easy to see me preach and think oh this is wonderful because you are seeing revelation but let me tell you one truth. Listen, brothers and sisters. If you don't learn to respect people for their perspectives. If I make you, if I make Pastor Femi, for instance, the president of ENI for one year, you'll be amazed at the remarkable changes that will happen in the ministry. You will find out that Koinonia may step into another dimension. Better ideas, better creativity. However, you must have the ability to um respect people's ideologies this is why some pastors can never be invited to preach in other churches aside from their churches i've preached almost everywhere i've preached in serubim and seraphim they like me oh, two of their branches i've preached there i've preached in anglican i've preached in uh, um 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 catholic equa cooking lutheran i've preached open air crusade I preach all kinds of things the one with no name youth group charismatic everything you know why listen among other things i have sustained an ability to respect listen don't major on the minors and minor on the majors i give you an instance you go to minister in a charismatic meeting for instance and then you know uh, um they are they are they are making their their uh, recitations and all of that and you just come because you are a pure pentecostal charismatic you put your hand and you are wondering what the hell is going on here what are all these people doing that terrible childish attitude will put you off when you study global leadership one of the principles of global leadership is the ability to be accommodating yet not compromising the ability the bible puts it this way it says you are in the world but not of the world you don't have to bend to your values but your your ability to tolerate people's differences must be elastic enough to accommodate people with different perspectives and ideologies there are churches where if you don't dance you are in trouble immediately they are dancing people are dancing and you just stand you are just moving around they say oh god please we dance in this church no you you have no right to harass anybody that way that's bullying that's intimidation again in a church where people are generally conservative someone is just dancing to god and dancing alone and you just stop him and say sorry uh, i don't know what exactly is happening to you but i think you have no it's still wrong are we together if in your house you eat with fork spoon and knife if you come to my house i say please bring warm water for me we don't eat swallow with with fork and spoon and knife in our house you should be able to respect that not to look and say oga we were all we all grew up in uk and we respect no 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 you don't do that when was the last time you were able to be bending enough to accommodate people's differences and then you will see why many churches are losing members because of the rigidity they are unbending there are so many churches their youths are leaving and running away because they they have put stringent conditions and will not have that sense of accommodation i remember when koinonia started i got a lot of text messages some said look let's go heal song let's sing contemporary others say no 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 we are not proud of africa with nigerians the way you do let's be singing our local songs and i said thank god god didn't call us god called me i will listen to god if you are not comfortable come and sit down after praise and worship there is still a path for you to enjoy are we together love don't fight people that sustain a perspective that is not your own there are churches for instance there are men of god who preach with audio visuals you see them they they have to use powerpoint 
are we together because of the nature of the teaching grace upon their life they take root words together and put them down and they want to make you understand you may come from a, a ministry where the moment they say praise the lord somebody shouting under the anointing now you go to a place where you sit down and somebody is trying to join this word and say please i need solid food i i, I what is all this uh, don't i know the meaning of art or of no we don't have that accommodation it's robbing us we never are able to see the power of god there are churches that i go to i know that they don't pray in tongues publicly i will minister there you will never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i've stopped believing in it but i must be able to make that adjustment so that the people can receive are you getting what i'm saying now absolutely there are churches that may not give that kind of accommodation for you to be jumping around like this you can't go to a church for instance a core orthodox church and when you are shouting the next thing you climb a chair and you are giving an illustration or you come and tap one elder and say prof come 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 on come on let me use you as an example you are messing up listen learn what i'm giving you wisdom learn this some of us out of our zeal you think everywhere is like your church no there are churches for putting water on this table you are you are going to answer a lot of questions not even to talk of five alive or banana or apple you are in trouble apple what for but there are churches if you don't do that they will query you are we together you come and you see banana and orange don't just come and say are they why are they not eating at home now no. don't do that i'm teaching you how to love the body because these are the things that cause trouble are we together This keyboard that is playing now, there are churches when a man of God stands everywhere becomes silent. No drums, no moving around, no camera, no snapping. No even saying yes. You know, like you respond, but no, 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 you don't do this. This thing you are doing now, this laughing, no, you don't do that. You are silent and you maintain an attitude of sober reflection. That's all right. That's all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are very few hymns I don't know. That's why when I get to any church, hymn book or not, once you raise the hymn, I will sing it. I think it was in, 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 in um, All Saints or so that I went to minister, I think a year or two or so ago. And then uh, I was telling them that I can, I can recite the Apostles' Creed beginning to end. I was a seminarian. I still am. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi prayed, prayed, prayed and hoped that I would become a seminarian. But God just decided to call me i'm still a seminarian hallelujah what is your level of accommodation in the body of christ can an equa church invite you as a pastor and you can go and bless the people without breaking people's hearts and doing all kinds of nonsense can a catholic church invite you and you go and get blessed this is how some of us behave even when we go to certain families you see men behave like that you go to the family you find out that they remove their shoes in front and you just step and march and enter and they say sorry sir they are even trying to tell you you embarrass the person you are taking and the lady is trying to say my brother i don't know how to tell you but please just remove your shoe my mother is a very neat person i'm not ready for trouble here and they say what is all that according to what the bible says if you enter he that receives a prophet and you start bringing all kinds of childish things and you leave that home and cause trouble for the people the mother now looks and says are these the kind of useless pastors that you move around with let me not see you with any of them you must be accommodating yet not compromising i will never fight anybody who sustains an ideology that is different from me including the muslims most of the people most of the people who have the cars that's why there are many churches muslims hate them because they hate muslims are we together now no terrorism and, a, and, and an extremist mindset is not the same i have met a lot of muslims that are absolutely nice people of course anybody without the holy spirit there's no guarantee to the person but i'm telling you there are people who have been able to sustain certain abilities one one of my drivers used to come his his um he has some three children i've never seen well-behaved house girls like that they came to visit me one time during salah 
and after you know they brought small food for me to appreciate me and all of that and then i gave all of them one one thousand naira and all of them in concert they kept tiny children alheri I said, my goodness, when was the last time a tongue-talking Christian child? You say, baby, how are you? You say, bring it, and he's even crying. This is what we have trained our children to do. Yet we have the audacity. Listen, the Bible says he sends the sun. He makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The only place where you see love is when an accident happens. Everybody rushes to rescue them because they don't want to care who is who. There are some of you, your destiny helpers sustain a paradigm that is different from yours. And if only you could make that adjustment, they can take you from where you are. Maybe the boss, you went to look for a job and you found out that the boss comes from a denomination you hate. And you just turn and say, this is it. See, let me tell you the truth. If you don't change your outlook about the body of Christ, the body of Christ can never be your church alone. I've told you again and again, stop thinking koinonia, think kingdom. Koinonia is only a small fraction of what God is doing. Joshua Selman is only a contributor to the big thing that God is doing. That's why you never see anybody come and stand up here and say, I called upon the God of Joshua Selman. Call upon it, wonderful, but in your room there. Don't come and infect people with an ideology that makes it look like it is just God of Joshua Selman that answers. God of this, God of every true believer answers. If he doesn't answer, you don't know him, you don't know his ways, or he's not your God in the first place. Many men of God are embarrassed. So you go to a place. How many pastors, brothers and sisters, go for meetings and many of them cannot preach because of the presence of certain pastors. They go somewhere, I'm a grace preacher. Now I can't preach because this person believes in deliverance or believes in casting out of devils. Or the person who is preaching deliverance now sees another person who particularly doesn't believe maybe everybody let people listen i want you to know as i say this especially for ministries because i'm speaking apostolically listen listen to me listen to me i want you to know that fundamentally the motivation of every true believer is to love jesus and to serve him truly this is the common denominator that binds us all are we together now there are people i love passionately who we do not share the same spiritual ideologies. They may not be comfortable with the dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I may not be com comfortable with certain levels of revelation. But it does not, is not enough reason whatsoever. We crack jokes about other things. Listen, the key to friendship is to concentrate on your similarity, not your differences. When you want to make money, focus on your difference. But when you want to make friends, focus on your similarity. The anger and the bitterness is growing in the church. The enmity is even becoming... Have you seen people? We are the members of this church. We are the members of this sect. We are the members of this prayer house. We are the members of this place. And then these ones come. We are the members of this. We are the ones for Apostle Joshua Selman. This one, we are the ones for this and that. These ones, we are Anglican. These ones, we are this. And all of them, and women of God, are destroying the body of Christ because we are raising people who are like political loyalists to a party rather than raising people who are kingdom conscious. Let me tell you what is making. If we don't correct this, most of our youths, for instance, who come to meetings like this and taste certain superior levels of the word of God and the power of God, some of them go back to their churches and then they don't go back with a heart of love. They go back with cynicism and hatred. The moment the pastor mounts up the podium, they are angry because they are trying to compare what he's saying with what Apostle Joshua Selman says. And they feel this guy, even an usher in Kononia, knows more revelation than this guy. What did you even call your name? If you are doing that, stop it now. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Stop it right now. There is more to a pastor than the ability to preach. Wisdom. Experience. Pain. There are too many things that qualify a man to be a shepherd. Preaching is only one of them. You may differ in ideologies. 
but I want you to know that you must sustain that ability that whether it is Anglican or Catholic or deeper life or cherubim and seraphim or whatever it is the truth is that any true believer that loves the Lord with his heart and professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ deserves that reception and there are times that to blend you may need to make adjustments even though temporal adjustments you must make the adjustments if I go to minister for instance in maybe all saints and the rest I'll not start um, raising songs like um, Shalom Shalom no 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 how many of them know that song there I'm going to raise a powerful hymn and you see our mothers lift up their hands and thank God I will adjust in a way that will open up their spirits to receive what God is saying is God giving us wisdom this has destroyed the body of Christ some come and say I am for Paul others come and say I am for Apollos others come and say I am for Agabus and we men of God love it we pride ourselves in all this political thing there are men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball they never pick one another's cult in Nigeria men of God have sent assassins to other people no no are you not amazed that whether it's Pastor Chris's crusade or Benny Hinn's crusade or Renhard Bonke's crusade or um, um, Dr. Olukoya's crusade or W.F. Kumuyi's crusade, you are seeing miracles happen. You are seeing God. At least we know that these people love God and they are serious. You can't say they are fake. Are we together now? It should tell you that if the same God who showers his anointing and grace upon them he knows what he's looking at the exact requirement brothers and sisters let's not forget that it's the same heaven we are going to heaven doesn't have branches so this annoyance and this resentment that we have against one another it should never be that way lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments never become an object of division in the body of christ don't become the reason why the church becomes divided hence powerless don't be the one sowing seeds the one sitting down to gossip and compare men of god and compare who has revelation and who has anointing in the meeting don't let that devilish thing be part of your life you must be able to embrace the diversity of the body god knows the reason why he left every denomination the full church is what will reveal christ any denomination you kick out will produce an incomplete church let me tell you the truth those of us who have this religious advocacy to wipe out other denominations and eventually have our denomination stand no sir no sir is deception from the pit of hell I came from an orthodox background before I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I started walking in the power of God and I thank God for that orthodox background because it's what has kept character in me right now I'm sorry to say it, but a lot of Pentecostal charismatics because of our understanding of the kingdom there is a lot of carelessness and imbalance that's why a pastor can be preaching yet he's sleeping around and he says no problem whatever happens is I mean God is a merciful God that foundation they didn't get me filled with the Holy Spirit but they gave me a basis of understanding I remember then in the seminary when when we will have you must your quiet time he was he was now he's, he's now i think he's now uh is he a venerable now i can't I, I don't know what he is right now god bless him forever forever a man who changed my life he wrote a quiet time manual who will recite scriptures every day every day whether you like it or not you must recite scripture 
your quiet time manual you must do it whether mechanically or religiously you shall must do it because they they supervise all of those things i was trained in the anglican you never greet somebody standing to look at the person like this this is how you greet bowing down no matter how tall you are if two of you are fighting outside three things will happen one they will call you and have a brief bible study second they will whip all of you the offender and the offendee they will whip both of you once they are done number three one will kneel down and you will pray lay your hands and pray for him you will stand up you you will kneel down and you pray for you i'm serious case closed i told you we are raising a when we start our schools that's the way we are going to train the people i tell you you can bring your children to our school and go to bed because we will train them whip out flesh add the things that our god and produce people of character we don't just want people who are doing well we want people who are living well hallelujah but right now what do we have in the body of christ i go to minister all the time and the moment i'm entering usually there are crowds of people everybody looking where is he coming and you see different men of god trying to square their shoulder me too my name is pastor this i'm the pastor of this this revival movement and i just come and i greet them well done sir when i come up stage i start by saying i honor every man every woman of god the pastors in this city we see and we appreciate your contribution to the advancement of the kingdom and you see all of them squaring up now you are talking you are appreciating us too and all of a sudden their heart becomes open to the meeting people who would never some of them maybe even talked about me but just that five minutes their hearts are open listen listen people fight you when you try to trivialize their contributions never trivialize people's contributions no matter how little don't look at your father and mother one day and say i've had many people in my life who have who have built me i'm happy to say you are one of them no they are not one of them they are your parents are we together now yeah. people usually fight you when you give them an impression that their contributions are small or worthless there are ministries i may not really have any much revelation to learn from them but i can learn leadership i can learn excellence there are ministries i can learn prayer part of the reasons why god has anointed me so much is because my heart is open over the body of christ i love the body of christ genuinely take away the hatred you have for certain denominations certain men of god you know it i've told you i never talk against any man of god i don't care who never you will never hear it from my mouth i repented years ago and it will never happen if i ever mention the name of a man of god is to say something commendable because i myself will stand before the white throne and i will be judged you're my brother you're my sister so take me by your hand together we will walk until he comes there's no what that stands between us hallelujah so it's a major mistake how much do you love people and are able to accommodate there are people who are talkatives they are noisemakers all they are falling down has not removed it don't try to change it create an adjustment their mouths are like that you are going to frustrate yourself trying to change it there are others who are cons it would take you praying and fasting to get good morning out of them get used to it are we together now i like this man of god but i hate his wife she talks too much sorry she's his wife she's already married accommodated she plans to be his wife for all the lifespan of that ministry so if you plan to be a member in that church get used to all the erratic attitude get to the emotionalism go past it and focus on what god is doing are we together now never hate people for holding reservations don't look at muslims moving around and the next thing you just look and say i hate these people no you have been devilish that's a luciferian spirit because god sends he makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good the bosses that convey you here after koinonia every time i come out i look at the people they are greeting me and i greet them 
I was selling protocol the other day. I said, make sure that we buy minerals for them. And we're happy. We crack jokes. We may have differences in faith and belief. And everybody has the responsibility to choose. But there are many other things that bind us. How many neighbors never talk face to face? Because one person is Hare Krishna. One person is, is, is uh, a, a member of this thing. And you say, I, I would never. Me enter this house and they bring food for you. You say, carry your food and walk back. I know what you did with it. No, you don't do that. Why don't you look away from the differences? I may not believe in deliverance. I may not believe in demons. I may not believe in whether uh, trouser or hair or whatever it is. I may not believe there is heaven. I may not believe there is this, but find a common ground. We're all human beings. Are we together? Never hate people. Listen, you know what hatred is? Hatred is, is a bitter dislike. It's a satanic thing. A bitter dislike. And usually... That hatred comes when people sustain a perspective that is different from yours. There are preachers who when they go to preach and they see that there is an interpreter, maybe somebody interpreting in Hausa or interpreting in another language, they put off their angry. No. That's why I love Reinhard Bonke. He's gone to almost every African continent with their attitudes. I, I watched one of his videos. He went to one African country. Africans, all students, we know how to disgrace ourselves. He went to one African country and before he even settled down, they took coconut and, and then they, 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 they scraped, they created O in the coconut and removed everything and told him to drink the water. And when he was drinking it, they were clapping. I said, is this how to honor a man of God? Don't stretch people beyond their limits. You believe in coconut as a way of welcome can keep it and you are stretching the man too much this guy came all the way from germany why come and put all of that pressure on him but you notice reinhard bonke if he's going to lagos you will see him wear agbada and you are wondering agbada many of our white missionaries do it right you see them struggling to tie this thing women tie. they can't do it well but they are doing it anyway and every time you see that it blesses you love do you love the body this looks simple but it may be the reason why many of our prayers are not answered because we do not sustain that love for God and for the body of Christ. These are the contemplations that the Lord himself shared with me. We have extreme hatred for people who sustain a different perspective. We pray in tongues so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our mind. We fast so much, yet there is hatred that is locked up in our minds. No. Remember, the Bible says, even faith works by love. Are we together? So I carry that heart of love. I prayed and fasted dry for 10 days. And I carry that attitude of hatred for the body of Christ. And I come and lay my hands on Pastor Femi and the power refuses to move. And you find out that there are few miracles happening in our meetings. I tell you, that's why many men of God have very little miracles and the manifestations of the Spirit. No. Never hate things that are different from your perspective. Don't hate people. Closely related to the subject of hatred, the Lord asked me to talk about this. I don't know why, but He, he put in my heart the issue of temper and anger. Look up. Let me talk about it for five minutes. The Lord began to talk to me. Do you know that what we call temper, you know what I mean? Hot tempered attitude, anger. Do you know it's a spirit? Look up please. Koinonia, are you aware that anger is a spirit? Yeah. How many believers, especially the men, are hot tempered? It's a terrible attitude. When you are involved in any ministry of deliverance, you know that the classic way of identifying the presence of demons in a person is that rage and temper becomes the expression. How many believers and they are going for a meeting and before the meeting, the man beats up his wife, beats her up and then steps into koinonia and is happy and says god is going to move now and you wonder why the power of god does not move you are trying to give a word of knowledge you are just giving nonsense because faith works by love say it after me faith works by love 
you finish gossiping about a man of God and a family and tearing people down and you stand and you want the glory of God to move around. No, it does not work like that. Love. Love. Oftentimes you will hear that Jesus was moved with compassion. Listen, if you are a hot-tempered person in this place tonight, if nobody has told you, you need help. Are we together? I don't care who you are. If you are hot-tempered, humble yourself, you need help. You will never be able to love people when you are hot-tempered. Do you know why? Because people will do things every day that will annoy you. How many days? Every day. Pastors, your wife, your husband, and all of that. is killing people in the body of Christ. That's where all this revelation of causes and destroying people all of a sudden comes. No. People will offend you. Members will do a lot of childish things. Especially if you are a pastor. Anybody who is a pastor or a leader here knows that working with people is a difficult thing. Because people's ideologies can be very interesting. But do you sustain that ability to be cool and calm? Many marriages are breaking today because of temper, hot temper. The lady hears the man talking about something, maybe he's talking to his sister, and he says, Sweetheart, how are you? And the woman keeps quiet. The man doesn't know what is happening. The next thing he sees um, a knife, she just stabs him and says, I didn't mean to do it, but you just killed your husband. As a true Christian, I don't care what degree of tongues you are praying. When you become temperate, the ability to absorb pain and pressure and yet be calm. Listen, especially for we young people, is one big secret of a healthy marriage. Hot-tempered people are dangerous people. They can do anything. See, closely related to that, every time you are angry, let me tell you how to manage it. Keep quiet. Because when you speak in anger, the devil will take hold of your tongue and you will say things you cannot retreat back. The Bible says the birds can carry your words and take it far beyond your reach. If you are angry at my preaching, leave Koinonia. After all, this is the, and then next Sunday, next week you come and you find out that all the members are angry. They are going to say, no, no, no. I don't mean that. What is the meaning of that? Can't I at least be angry? No. No. Never justify anger and that hot tempered attitude god is speaking to many of us here great people how many of us have been robbed of the opportunity we have lost friends because of temper we have lost relationships because of temper we have lost destiny helpers because of temper we have lost anointings and graces because of temper tonight god is calling us to love people your heart must be very accommodating factor it as part of your life that people will annoy you every day every day hot temper it's too much in the body of christ i watch with shock the way preachers are hot tempered i've seen men of god talk to their wives in ways i could not believe a man turns and talks to his wife as if she's a piece of rag i counsel a case recently a woman who was thrown away by her husband a pastor for two months she was sleeping outside outside doesn't mean another place outside on background she will carry a wrapper in the night and you you will throw her outside two months god is my witness yet that man will come to church on sunday and dance and sing who is deceiving who temper how many pastors beat their wives I mean beat to matching them and say I will kill you. How many pastors punish members because of anger? Kneel down, raise your hand as if it's as if it's, it's they paid school fees. They, they, you, you gave them money to come to people innocently come to your church, you punish them and make them look like idiots. All these things we are doing, let me tell you, is very, very bad, and the Lord is not pleased with it. Temper. Say in the name of Jesus, shout it in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To work on anger and temper. Yes. You will destroy more people than you know when you are an angry person. 
especially for our sisters do you know the bible says it is better to stay on the rooftop of your house than to live with an angry woman think about that that you carry your mattress on your zinc to stay there rather than living with a woman that is contentious and angry these are the things that short circuit the power of god so we are fasting we are praying but there is temper there's resentment do you know that if i'm angry with tosin and i hate her if god gives me a prophetic word for tosin that word will be corrupted because that word will rub off on my unrenewed my angry mind especially if what god is telling her is a good thing prophesy to her that god will lift her and i'll now say god will lift you but god is saying you should mind the way you talk to men of god now that one is no longer god <laughs> are we together Men of God and churches are trying to make men like them and not like Jesus. While it is true that when you become a leader, you influence people, you must be sure that the person you are following is following Jesus. Not following a denomination, not following a geo, not following a, 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 a priest or pope or whatever. Following Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Some of you may never appreciate what I'm saying now until you see what these attributes will take out from your life. They will take more. Some of our mothers and people here who are a bit elderly will understand exactly what I'm saying because these little attributes have cheated a lot of people. They have lost opportunities that may never come again save by the mercy of God. People have lost jobs. They entered interview places and and they try to make them angry on purpose. I hope you know that. They can make you angry on purpose. Just job interview. You step in and they say, what kind of stupid girl are you? You step in, you can't greet us, you can't do everything. And they say, what the heck? Is it job? And you bounce out and go and continue your suffering. You are the one suffering. Whereas you fail the test. I remember one gentleman who was ringing, ringing my phone and he sent me a text. He said, God told me you are my spiritual father. I didn't even answer him. After like three days, he said, why are all men of God like this? I said, look at, look at, look at the person who is stalking. Three days, 72 hours. The same person who is making all that noise. Temper. Anger. I will kill you. We will die in this place. I will remove my Christianity. When I beat you, I will put... No, no, don't remove your Christianity. Leave it there. It's not a garment you take off and put back. Listen, don't come and be a nice Christian in church and then go outside. Box. There are even believers that fight. You, you know, ba? As in, I mean, I don't mean words, verbal fight, real fight. When they finish, they'll be boiling and they say, remember, Jesus died for you. And they're, they're, don't do that if i have a daughter i would never give a, 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 my daughter to an angry man i don't care what he has he's a dangerous man men have destroyed children in the womb of women because of anger Temper. this is your house your home we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. God knows from the depth of my heart that I love everybody in Koinonia. I may not know everybody by name, but I love you. You see me greeting people after service. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to know who your father is, who your mother is. I never treat people and say, you, your father is a senator. You, your mother is, your father is an iron bender. You stand here. You stand here. I don't want to know who is who. I love people genuinely from the depth of my heart. In fact, that's the meaning of my name, the way to love. Do you love people enough to receive the anointing to change them? When I counsel sometimes from morning till night, I am tired and I'm hungry. It's because of love. I think all that I'm, I've taken today is just a drink that I took at the airport. I couldn't even think of saying I'll try to get a meal to eat. Why? 
why should I be eating when there are people who are sitting and waiting for the word of God to change them? Why should I say, ah, I, I want to be, no, 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 no. I love you too much. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down, not marches on the sheep, lays down. Emoji, you want power. You have fasted, you have prayed. I'm showing you the other sides of the equation. Love. I love God's people. Whenever I shout and quarrel you here, there are times that I'm hard on you in my teachings, but you can look beyond my teachings and know that I'm communicating from a heart of love. I will never open my mouth and speak resentful and hateful words against anybody that God has created. No. You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to. Never rejoice at the downfall of others. You will never be anointed that way. Don't celebrate when a man falls. Are we together now? You hear that armed robbers came and robbed the church. You laugh and say, I, I, I knew it. They don't have faith. No. The pain of the body should be your pain. The joy of the body should be your joy. I'm teaching you what we call a corporate life. You must learn to hide your individualism. And let the church rise and be exalted. And sometimes you may need to constrain your honor and allow the body. When people send a lot of miracles, text messages with many things that have happened, sometimes I send it to the workers. You will never hear me use words like my ministry or my church. If you hear me use that, it, it was a slip of tongue or something that just happened because it is never my church. I'm only a steward. It's never my ministry. Before I was born, God was still at work. If, I, if it tarries after, long after I'm gone, I will only be one of many that has brought my contribution. I will never look down on the body of Christ. I will never look down on any man that is made in the image of God. I have seen people who look like nothing. And within one, two, three years, God raised them. Some of us were like that. If we were to follow based on the standards of men, some of us would probably not be able to enter some of the places we are entering right now. But God has the ability to see the motif of men's heart. That's why many of us who think we are qualified never receive anything. And there are others who approach God and we say, Lord, if there is any vessel you are looking for, find one in me. I never forget where he's brought me from. I never forget what he's doing in my life. I love him with my life and I love his word and I love the body of Christ. Everyone say after me, I love the body of Christ. I love God's creation. Do this little thing, brothers and sisters, and you will see doors open. I know many of you will be expecting me to say something great and something charismatic. Never trivialize what I am teaching you right now. Not only will it give you character, it will sustain your open heavens. As a pastor, people never become loyal to you until they discern that you love them. Many pastors hate their members. They only use their members. Use their members. There was a time I rebuked the protocol department. I said, why did you withdraw security? They said, ah, there is peace and calm. I told them, I said, peace or no peace. Make sure that we have adequate securities at all times. Not just during koinonia, but any activity. Let there be correspondences with security. Because I love God's people too much. God brought these people as a trust. We must be able to take care of them. You don't want to imagine how much we spend every week transporting buses, the chairs and the rest. And the protocol department know they will never meet me once and say, are we not spending too much? It is never too much for the people that God is going to raise to become mighty people. It is never too much. Love. Love. There remain at this tree. Faith, hope and love. 
But the Bible says the greatest is love. Let me show you one scripture as we round up. One scripture that has blessed me so, so much. 1 John 4 verse 16. Please media, give us 1 John 4 verse 16. These words came very strong upon my heart. And I pray that it will be strong upon your heart the same way it came upon my heart. Go ahead and read. Let's read together. One to read. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Listen. He said God is what? He didn't say God has love. He didn't say God loves. He said God is love. And then, this is what he says. He says, he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Not he that prays in tongues. He that dwells in love. Your life becomes like a magnet when the love of Christ is at work in you. Listen, there are people on this earth, when you stand close to them, you literally feel the love of Jesus like a river flowing. You know there is nothing you do that will drive them away from you. They love you. May God make you such a person in the name of Jesus Christ. This is one big secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. Every time I come for Koinonia and I sit down here, I watch the protocol department doing their thing, the ushers doing their thing, and the love of God falls upon my heart for them. As I stand and see the way they are struggling to make sure things work, I never come here morning or afternoon to supervise what they are doing. Sometimes as early as 8 o'clock in the morning, they are already working doing everything and I look at them every worker in Koinonia they know that I love them with my life not just because we, we put dinners for them I love them with me and I will give my life for the workers I will and I mean it with, 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 with no mercy I will never watch somebody come around me who is hungry if you know me very well and you are close to me after greeting you I ask you what have you eaten and you try to say, no, no. I say, what have you eaten? If it is 500 naira that I have, we will share it. Listen, brothers and sisters, when the heart of love is at work in you, power will never be far from you. Never. Never be far from you. God will be able to bring members. God will be able to bring children. God will bring people that you will build. He that dwells in love is very important. It's not enough to pursue anointing. It's not enough to pursue lifting and fame. You must love people. Love overrides prayer. Love overrides fasting. First Corinthians 13. I just feel we should round up here. 1 Corinthians 13 as we round up. We are going to examine ourselves and our love lives as far as God is concerned. God is doing a circumcision in our hearts tonight. For though I speak with the tongues of men, look up everyone, and the tongues of angels, there is no man alive who has entered this spiritual dimension where you can flow in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And the Bible says, even if you get to that realm, it says, and have not love. Can we have a version that says love if there is? It says, I am become as what? A sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, if I become such a man of God that I can speak both in the tongues of men, right? I am nothing. Verse 2. Let's hurry up, media. Please help us. Verse 2. And if I have prophetic powers is that not what we are looking for we are looking for it passionately chasing every man of god with handkerchief and and oil somebody met me in a meeting and just he just opened it and said man of god preach on this oil i mean i just said god bless it it is done he just closed it i said you see the kind of thing we are talking about if i have prophetic powers the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose he says, and I understand all secret truths. Come on now. This is the realm of Rema. Insights that we are looking for. The Bible says, even if you rise to that point and you possess the mysteries and possess all knowledge, 
then he says if i have sufficient faith no one on earth i know has gotten to that dimension so that you can remove mountains but have not love the bible says i am what on earth if i raise 10 wheelchairs my name will be on poster everywhere what will they call me great man of god tomorrow we are going for a crusade right and there will be all kinds of miracles in that crusade i'm sure the people are excited right now as i was passing coming i saw one small poster and i saw my face there i just nodded my head and we, and, i mean we just passed i, I saw the poster you know it is in barnawa the crusade is in barnawa tomorrow barnawa for christ crusade and while we were coming i saw somewhere they just put my face i said somebody will see this now and say ah this man of god while they are laughing and clapping this is what god is saying he says if i have all this power to raise wheelchairs and prophesy and teach mysteries and i have not love based on men's standard i'm a great person they will give me money they will sow into my life they will deceive all these deceitful things that happen but the bible says i am nothing empty zero useless verse 3 even if i dole out all that i have i dish out the giving dimension now even if i give out everything i have to the poor in providing food and if i surrender my body to be burned or in order that i may glory but i have not love he says i gain what nothing do you know what it means to give yourself to die how many people have we rejoiced and said they died for others when we get to heaven you will see that their reward may be small for some of them love is a big deal to god love endures long now give us king james we're ready to be kings give us king james charity does what suffers long the word long suffering there's the word patience now everywhere as i read on wherever the word charity is except your name is charity i want you to put your name there ready we'll just read it one two read joshua selman suffers long and is kind joshua selman envies not read it you are reading it joshua selman vaunted not itself and is not puffed up stop is that true about you is that true that you are patient are you a patient person is that true about you that you are kind is it true of, i know you pray in tongues i know you're a miracle worker you're an apostle you're a prophet is it true that you do not envy oh how many believers die in envy it's not puffed up you don't lift up yourself trying to show that you are better than others because of whatever privileges you have next verse we're rounding up it says it does not behave itself unseemingly and then love seeketh not her own the meaning of that is that you prioritize people and their needs even above yourself in other words you are not selfish and self-centered is that true is that really true about us aha here is the point it's not easily angered or provoked think it no evil when was the last time you saw people and you did not think negative about them to look at a lady and say this lady looks like a prostitute what of this lady looks like the kind of vessel god will use says does not think evil verse 6 rejoice not in iniquity so you see living in iniquity is also a sign that the love of god is not in you because when you love him you will love to please him when you love your fellow man you will not come and destroy your fellow man and do all these kinds of things but rejoice it in the truth seven it peered all things endurance there are times that for the sake of the love you have for people you will endure a lot of things it believed all things it hoped all things it endured all things eight it says love never fails everyone say it after me love never fails 
He says, but whether there be prophecies, they shall what? That means even the prophetic realm has errors and limitations. He says, whether there be tongues, utterances, communications, the Bible says they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, rema, revelation, it says they shall vanish away. Verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. 10. We are reading down to 13 or 14. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. 11. When I was a child, void of love, I proved it by speaking like a child. I understood like a child and I taught like a child. Tonight's teaching is making us become mature people. It says, now that I am a man, I am matured. I put away what? Childish things. That means something about your speaking must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your understanding must change after tonight's meeting. Something about your thought life must change your action. It says, for now we see through a glass. Go to verse 13, please. 13. And now abided what? Hope. Faith. Hope. And love, these three, it says, but the greatest is love. What is the greatest? The greatest, brothers and sisters, is not building a ministry. The greatest is not becoming a man of God. The greatest is not becoming a custodian of kingdom mysteries and revelation. The greatest is not just having power and anointing. No, the universal scent. At the end of my life, I want this to be said about me, that I love God with all my heart. I served him with all my heart and that I loved humanity with my all and my heart. I don't want no credit to my name that I built houses and bought cars and um, what happened? I traveled abroad, I own jets, I own all those things. Thank God for them. But I sincerely do not want all of these things added because they are all useless. I have learned early in life the vanity of anything that is outside love. When we get to heaven, they are not going to ask how many wheelchairs were raised. They are not going to ask how many suits you wore. They are not going to ask how many Versace you bought. They are not going to ask how many first class flights you entered. All that matters when you stand before him love and if the love of God is not found in you this is scary but let me tell you the truth you are going to hell you are going to hell without the love of God for sure so we are going to pray tonight very briefly rise up on your feet in one minute before we pray please everyone rise if you can if you can please rise inside and outside I just want you to close your eyes for one minute and reflect on what I've taught tonight. Love. The Bible says God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God. I want you to reflect in one minute how much the love of God has dried away from your heart and how much your love for the body of Christ has been questionable. I want you to think of how your life has contributed to destroying the life of others, if in any way it has. Or the way your life has contributed in destroying churches, ministries, men of God, the body of Christ. Think of how you have brought denominational barriers and destroyed people's faith. Think of how you have castigated pastors and made people not to listen to them. It's time for change. I know you're looking for power. I know you're looking for anointing. I know you're looking for money. You're looking for increase. We all are searching for these things. But I'm showing you the way. God is speaking to us. Some of us here, imagine how many relationships you have destroyed because of lack of love. Imagine people who would have been married now, but because you do not sustain the love of Christ, you destroyed best friends. Imagine destinies you have turned around and aborted. Some of you have even made marriages to be divorced. You have made pastors to hate other pastors. You have carried news that are not newsworthy. You have made ministries to fight themselves. 
If you want to see the glory of God upon your life, the law must be at work. Imagine how many times you have held unforgiveness in your heart against people, your husband, your wife, your brother, your child, fellow believers. It's time to let go. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray and say, Lord, let it go. I release it tonight in the name of Jesus. All the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hurt, I release it and let it go tonight. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Please, we are praying very seriously. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, never will I be an enemy of the advancement of your kingdom. Never will I be the reason why someone's destiny will be jeopardized. Never will I be the reason why the body of Christ will crumble. I repent of ignorance. I repent of childishness. The Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. That's why I call it the mystery of perfection. This is the ancient mystery that makes men perfect. Mature. Lift your voice and pray and open up your heart before God. Lord, I've fought people who do not agree my, with my Christian perspectives. I've fought men of God and ministries. I've fought people who are gifts from God to me. Who would have changed my life. But I've resented them because of their ideologies. I have hated people of other religions. I have hated people who sustain a different perspective to life than my own. Anybody who is not like me becomes my enemy. I repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Change my heart. Change my heart. No more hatred. Lift your voice and rebuke the spirit of hatred. It's a spirit. Hatred is a choice. You can choose to love and you can choose to hate. If there are people you hate and you hold on in your heart, I'd like you to begin to release them right now. I release my mother. I release my father. I release that pastor. I release my church. I release this denomination. I release my wife and my husband. Hatred is a choice. Love is a choice. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points very quickly. We are going to pray against anger. And that hot tempered attitude. Please listen. If you are here and you know you are suffering from anger. You are not going to come out. But I want you to be honest and pray. And say Lord I am tired of this thing. It is destroying my life. It is destroying valuable relationships. Don't pretend and say I am a this and that. Open your mouth and pray. Temper. Sisters make sure you pray. Brothers make sure you pray. The Bible says. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It says, don't give the devil a foothold. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I choose to be joyful. I choose to be a happy person. Regardless of circumstances. Are you praying tonight? I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of resentment and cynicism and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. I cause the spirit of anger, that hot tempered attitude that hurts others, whether with words or actions or thoughts. Pray it out of your life. Pray it out of your life. I'm a changed person tonight. I make up my mind for change. I make up my mind for change. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want my life to host the glory of God. I want to be a genuine career of his power and his glory. And I lay aside the weight and the encumbrances that rob me from carrying the glory of God. Hallelujah last prayer point let's hold hands all over this building hold the hands of someone 
I'd like you to pray for yourself and pray for koinonia passionately from your heart lift up your voice and say Lord like a mantle may your love come upon everyone and upon the house go ahead and pray Lord a baptism of love in every department among the leaders among the executives pray for love pray for me pray for love let the love of God that bond of perfectness be at work in my brother and my sister now pray for the person whose hands you are holding pray you don't need to know them you don't need to know their tribe you don't need to know where they are coming from there's one thing that binds us all together that we love the Lord some of them may be struggling in sin but pray for them you love them some of them may be wounded soldiers they may have made mistakes they may have messed up in different areas but you must pray for love pray for your family members many of them may not deserve your love but i like you to pray and say lord the love of god in my heart the love of god across my neighbor hallelujah hallelujah please hold hands we're praying i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me. I need you to never make your life of today. Never make your life an accommodation. Never make your life an accommodation for hatred and bitterness. Anybody that comes into your life and is trying to sow the seed of bitterness, drive them far from your life. Don't anybody that comes and is gossiping about, drive them far. I never allow these kinds of environments. Because when the love of God is perfect, then you'll find out that sickness will leave you. For as long as those things are there, sickness can hold on to you. Failure can hold on to you. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Many of us we keep getting sick and sick we keep getting oppressed because when satan looks at you there's something in your life that looks like him but when love is perfected in you believe me believe me you conquer death when love is perfected you conquer sickness when love is perfected you conquer failure when love is perfected you conquer limitation when love is perfected your health is preserved there's no stress there's no there's no blood disease as a result of any stress you live a very happy life by choice a happy life by choice hallelujah before i pray for us very quickly still holding hands there are people here tonight you've heard me teach on love and there are many of us the lord is talking to you and first and foremost you've not even established your love for jesus christ you may be a christian you may be inside outside maybe you once fell in love with god but for some reason you have derailed you know you have derailed and there are people who have never made that decision every time you hear preachers making an altar call like this you scorn them you think they are wasting their time the lord jesus is giving you a chance tonight wherever you are please i'd like you to leave that hand of your neighbor and make your way to the front we have just one or two minutes for this wherever you are make your way to the front right now god bless you people are coming celebrate them outside inside god bless you it's time to receive the greatest love god bless you and there are people who have done a lot of things in their lives and they are asking can god take me back i want you to know that god will take you the way you are and change you make your way to the front we don't care what you have done or not done jesus said he who has no sin should first cast the stone make your way to the front two minutes please god bless you jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father 
let this be a new beginning win that war in your heart tonight win that war over destiny tonight god bless you make way for them hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out we love you everybody at one time or the other has had to make this decision god bless you my dear join them bless you my brother if you're still thinking about it just rush out quickly i want to lead you to this prayer some of you are crying don't be ashamed it's a decision that will change your life lift your right hand and i want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem let this be i want you to know that jesus is in this place say lord jesus i've heard your word tonight and i declare that i love you with all my heart i ask you to forgive me i've lived my life the way i want now i hand over that life to you take that life and use it for your glory i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm a changed person my past is gone my past is over a fresh start begins for me today in the name of jesus christ now keep those hands lifted as i pray for you father you brought these ones to change them and bless them and we thank you some of them have gone through things we cannot imagine i pray that tonight will be a fresh start for them some of them are giving their lives to jesus for the first time others are rededicating their lives may they never go back to their lifestyles again give them a new lifestyle in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that god will make you mighty men and women i pray that you will be completely changed from today forward ever and backward never i bless you in the name of jesus christ god bless you please follow the gentleman waving his hands there's a gentleman and a lady waving their hands hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin